take pictures of what was happening because I feared for my safety. That testimony was shared Thursday by Norma Pizana during the first day of proceedings in the trial of Antonio Beeler, an Austin, Texas activist accused of refusing to obey a police officer after he stepped in to record and ultimately defend a woman when she was apparently being treated aggressively by police. Pizana is the female passenger who was ripped from her friend's car shortly before Beeler was arrested for resisting arrest and for allegedly spitting in the face of Officer Patrick Oborski. While those charges were ultimately no billed by a Travis County grand jury, they did indict Beeler on a Class C misdemeanor charge of failure to obey the order of an officer. The state is relying on the testimony of Oborski and Officer Robert Snyder, with Oborski testifying that Beeler was verbally aggressive and that he considered him a threat. The defense is attempting to demonstrate that the officers never had the proper authority to detain or handcuff Beeler, and that it was the officers themselves that were the aggressors that early New Year's morning. To show the officers as the aggressors, the defense called Pizana to the stand. She told the jury that she called out to Beeler to video record the altercation because she was afraid of what the officers would do to her, saying that she had never been treated like that by a male. At the conclusion of the lengthy first day of the trial, Beeler told the Liberty Beat that he's pleased to see the truth coming to light. I'm really glad that people have been able to come out and tell the truth about what's happened after all these years, and I'm just hoping that the jury, that they're eager to make sure that justice is served. Today is day two in the trial, and it's set to begin with the defense's questioning of Officer Oborski, followed by testimony from an expert on police policies and procedures. Beeler will also take the stand. The Liberty Beat will be there in the courtroom, and for the continuing coverage, as well as the full report of Thursday's proceedings, go to thelibertybeat.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at mymagicmud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. On Wednesday, a new lawsuit was filed against the Environmental Protection Agency for the agency's approval of a controversial herbicide from the Dow Chemical Company. The suit was brought forth by the Center for Food Safety and Earth Justice on behalf of a coalition of groups, including the Pesticide Action Network North America. The news comes just one week after approval was granted for the use of 2,4-D on genetically modified corn and soybean. A similar suit was filed on October 16th by the Natural Resources Defense Council. The Houston Police Officers Union has accused Democratic candidate for District Attorney Kim Ogg of illegally releasing the name of a juvenile victim of sexual assault. Union President Bray Hunt claims that Ogg released the name of the victim in a news release asking for leads while she was employed with Crime Stoppers of Houston. Ogg stated that no identity was released. She says a victim's name was mistakenly included on a draft script for the television program Predator Check but was not aired on television. Kim Ogg has made headlines in the DA race by promising to decriminalize cannabis in Harris County. The Electronic Frontier Foundation has released an updated version of the Surveillance Self-Defense Report, a guide to protecting yourself from spying while on the Internet. The report includes information on important security topics, guides to privacy software, and guides for activists and journalists. The report was first released in 2009. For more information, visit ssd.eff.org. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Well, you can. Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. I'm Brooke Alvarez, and while I may not acknowledge your presence in person, and if you try to approach me, you'll most certainly be hit in the face with the stinging nettles I carry on me at all times, I like to take a moment every now and again to answer your questions so that you can get to know the real me. Here's a tweet from at Kirkamunga saying, what is the most important thing to remember when talking to people who may not be as informed as you? I love this question, Kirkamunga. There are three simple steps to dealing with uninformed people. First, when you realize that someone doesn't know something, repeat very loudly in their face the thing they don't know. For example, you don't know who the Prime Minister of Zimbabwe is? Second, look to everyone around you and let them know that this person is completely ignorant. Hey everyone, Sebastian doesn't know who the Prime Minister of Zimbabwe is. Third, you call up the Prime Minister of Zimbabwe and tell him that Sebastian doesn't know who he is and then laugh really loudly until the ignorant person just leaves in utter shame. If you'd like to ask me a question, just tweet it to my handle at Brooke Alvarez or post it to my Facebook wall.
This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free and take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can also join us via Skype at username lrn.fm. Looks like uh, there's yet another Ebola case confirmed supposedly in New York City. We'll tell you the New very York City. scary uh, things they're going to be doing to try to control that problem. Of course, you know, New York is the empire state, so how will they handle things differently uh, from other states? We'll let you know that here in a moment. It's uh, certainly not going to be good news for people flying in. Uh, from certain countries. Our toll-free number tonight, again, is 855-450-FREE. Plus, an update on the Silk Road, the latest on dread uh, the man alleged to be Dread Pirate Roberts, Ross Ulbricht, and what happened to those murder charges that he was supposed to be facing. There's a story about that out of the They're, they're still just sitting over there in a file somewhere. Well, they certainly haven't been brought officially as criminal charges. We can give you more information about it here in a little bit, and your calls are certainly welcome as well. Plus, uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, Ellen, Daryl, and Ian in the studio tonight. And Ellen, you brought in something about how the, the news is uh, ostensibly bad for you. Where's this coming from? So I found this article on TheGuardian.com. And it's titled, Nudist is Bad for You, and Giving Up Reading It Will Make You Happier. And this was This is by a news company, the UK Guardian. (laughs) (laughs) Well, specifically by the one author, Rolf DeBelli, but I guess it's- So please stop reading our publication, (laughs) It's Bad for You. It's quite brave of him to be posting this on a a news website. (laughs) I'm quite surprised at the audacity. All right. But- Reading over it, it, I found it very interesting. And um, this article is kind of lengthy, so I might just pick out a few areas. In the past few decades, the fortunate among us have recognized the hazards of living with an overabundance of food, obesity, diabetes, and have started to change our diets. But most of us do not yet understand that news is to the mind what sugar is to the body. News is easy to digest. The media feeds us small bites of trivial matter, tidbits that don't really concern our lives and don't require thinking. That's why we experience almost no saturation. Unlike reading books and long Meaning magazines... you never get full. You never get tired of consuming it. Is that the idea? Um, I think what he means by saying that is that you don't exactly remember all of the details. It doesn't leave a strong imprint hmm. on your mind. It's not something that changes your life in any significant way. Or, or um, it's not something that you can remember every detail of. It's just like, oh, look, there's a news article, and mm-hmm. I'm going to read it because it's got a flashy title. Most people don't even read it, I don't think. They probably just watch the, or they look at the headlines. You know, something I've found myself doing a lot more now that I have a smartphone is I'll just scroll through Facebook and, like, read news headlines, mm-hmm. and then I'll just be like, oh, yeah, I know about now that Now you're article. informed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Unlike reading books and long magazine articles, which require thinking, we can, sh- we can swallow limitless quantities of news flashes, which are bright colored candies for the mind. Today, we've reached the same point in relation to information that we faced 20 years ago in regard to food. We're beginning to recognize how toxic news can be. News misleads. Take the following event, borrowed from Nassim Taleb. A car drives over a bridge, and the bridge collapses. What does the news media focus on? The car. The person in the car. Where he came from, where he planned to go, how he experienced the crash, if he survived. But that's all, irre- that's all irrelevant. What's relevant then? The structural stability of the bridge. That's the underlying risk that's been lurking and could lurk in other bridges. But the car's flashy. It's dramatic. It's a person, not extract. Not well, abstract. Yeah, I mean, uh, I can understand that. Um, who wants to read about structural damage when they can hear about someone's life being affected? I mean, it, it's more personal to talk about the person who is affected by this. It's something more people can relate to. I mean, it, you wouldn't have a, a, it wouldn't be an effective news article to talk about all the ways that the, the bridge, you know, the engineers have stated that the bridge was weak. Well, you know, that's just not as interesting. Right? It, that's true. It is uh, cheap and easy news to produce because when you make something that's relatable to more people, making it more personal and uh, describing the experience from their point of view, 
Uh, yes, a lot of people are going to be interested in reading that article, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess it's a little more terrifying and factual and in-depth if you describe, like, well, when this bridge was built, they didn't build it up to a certain code, and so it was unstable for a few years, and this was just the straw that broke the camel's back, and then the bridge collapsed, and now we've got all of these people responsible for it. But, like, that's a very tough thing for people to swallow hmm. you know the the responsibility and what led to certain things it's more of an in-depth look at the situation than just oh this bad thing happened to this person and now he's got to deal with the emotional consequences and it, it seems as though it's one of those things to where they just sort of throw out what they think people want to hear like you want to hear about this and if there's, you know, a car accident that happens and one of the passengers happened to have smoked cannabis within the last two weeks because you don't really know when exactly they right. smoked it. They just had some in their system. So, you know, like one of the passengers was stoned. Well, then it becomes a huge flashy tabloid thing where, uh, you know, like stoned passenger is is uh, hospitalized in car crash. Yeah. The only person that didn't walk away had cannabis in his system. <laughs> and he was sent to jail afterwards. But I, it's just, it's more eye-catching. And I think that's what he's trying to get at, is that news agencies, although they do report on news, it's not always newsworthy what they report on. Right. Uh, so anyway, he goes on to say... Uh, news leads us to walk around with the completely wrong risk map in our heads. So terrorism is overrated. Chronic stress is underrated. The collapse of Lemon Brothers Ebola! is overrated. <laughs> yeah, that's certainly true. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking when I read this. It was mm -hmm. the uh, I was actually talking to somebody the other day. Uh, I just randomly met this person, and they were saying, I don't know if I'm ever going to go visit Africa now because of the Ebola thing. And I'm like... Well, don't you know that Ebola is... Africa's is... huge! <laughs> right. <laughs> to say you would never visit Africa because Ebola is ridiculous and really shows a not even a cursory understanding of the Ebola situation. If there's a concern with Ebola, as uh, as our listener in Cameroon pointed out, you know, he's in Cameroon. That's on the west, sort of the western end of Africa. But yet even in Cameroon, there is no issue with Ebola. It's only in Liberia and Sierra Leone and maybe was it uh, is it Ghana that's uh, that's next to uh, that Liberian? sounds right. Maybe something in Ghana, but only really the ultimate furthest west, northwest kind of uh, area of Africa. Just really very ignorant. To, that, to that's think like that. saying, I'm never going to Europe because there were protests in Greece. Yeah. Right. They're very isolated incidences, but you can see how easily these things can get overblown when you stress the severity of uh, how much one person suffered. And then everybody's mm -hmm. thinking, well, what if that happens to me? Sure. Where's this from, by the way, this this Theguardian.com. Okay, very good. Yep. We are not rational enough to be exposed to the press. Watching an airplane crash on television is going to change your attitudes towards towards that risk, regardless of its real sure. probability. I know plenty of people that are afraid to fly, even though the risk of crashing in an airplane is much lower than, I don't know, being- A car crash. Yeah. Much lower than a car crash. Very much so. If you think you can compensate with the strength of your own inner contemplation, you're wrong. Bankers and economists who have powerful incentives to compensate for newsborne hazards have shown that they cannot. The only solution, cut yourself off from news consumption entirely. Which, I don't necessarily agree with that all the way. I, I do enjoy reading news occasionally. Um, I wouldn't say you should cut yourself off completely from the world because then you, there are certain advantages to knowing what's going on around you. Well, yes, yes, there are. But at the same time, I can understand where the author is coming from. One of the one of the good reasons to cut yourself off from news is that it can be depressing as well. I don't know if he addresses yes. this at all in the in the piece, but oh, it does. You know, news tends to be negative. It tends to be right because the as the saying goes, if it bleeds, bleeds it bleeds. leads. So. Yeah. You know, a newspaper editor is much more likely to put a front page story about, you know, some crime that happened than somebody made, you know, so somebody donated food to homeless people. Right. right. Well, you're never going to read an interesting story about somebody having a great day. Like, nobody's yeah. going to write a, a hit story a on that. <laughs> All right, so we'll come back with more uh, from the story here that Ellen is sharing with us. Should you turn off the news? Have you turned off the news? And how has it affected your life? 
Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or maybe you work in the news business and you want to defend your trade. It's Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com gold it's like nothing else on earth from the romans through the renaissance from the industrial age to the space age gold has weathered the test of time for six thousand years gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth according to the world gold council and the u.s mint demand is at an all-time high the stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day midas resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction, a tummy tuck, or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices, and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asianrunlikehellguide.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial on in here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And to uncover the secrets and expose the lies, check out freedomsphoenix.com. You get that every day there. In fact, they're constantly providing you with detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. 
Go now to freedomsphoenix.com and sign up for the free daily dispatch at freedomsphoenix.com. But right now, Ellen's article is saying you should not do those things, that you should not uh, be listening to or watching the news because, well... First of all, you're not really being informed. You're just kind of given, uh, you know, not really all the information that you need. And it's in such uh, a way, it's for, presented in such a way that it's hard to really retain useful information out of it. I mean, am I summarizing that correctly so far, Ellen? Right, so far. And um, I, I just want to clarify a bit. I think that... It's sensationalist as well? Yes. Right? And um, I, I would say that this is more of a topical thing because even if you're reading books or well-written like journal articles, um, that's that was news at one point or another. So every, everything has been news before. So are you saying don't read anything because you will never retain? No, that's what I'm saying not to do. I'm saying uh, you shouldn't avoid all news. Just pick out the news that is actually important because this next point is that news is irrelevant. Out of the what? approximately 10,000 news stories you've read in the last 12 months, name one that, because you consumed it, allowed you to make a better decision about a serious matter affecting your life, your career, or your business. The point is, the consumption of news is irrelevant to you, but people find it very difficult to recognize what's relevant. It's much easier to recognize what's new. The Ken, hold on, before you go on, can you name one, uh, Daryl W. Perry? You are a newsman, by the way. You yes. report the news over at fpp.cc. Yes. Uh, you will sometimes, you know, just sort of link to other news articles. Sometimes you'll write your own uh, coverage. So you sort of, you go through a lot of headlines. You see a lot of I do. news. Uh, you've probably seen, as she suggested, 10,000 at least uh, in the last year. So was there one of those stories that had, what was the question? Did, did it change? Did it allow you to make a better decision about a serious matter affecting your life or your business? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Hmm. There's certainly news about, you know, what the NSA is doing, news about legislation that's being passed. I guess that, that would alter is your affecting behavior. us. Indirectly. Well, what about like uh, like Ebola? I mean, if you read that news, then you might know that it's a bad time to schedule a trip to Liberia. You know, that right. might be you could make a decision like that based on that news. Like you could Maybe. decide not to do certain things, like to avoid certain. Like I might not want to travel to Syria uh, right. at the moment. There there may be a bomb in in my future if I go to Syria. So you know that could be a, that could be something you learn from the news yeah that that's possible i know that uh a lot of the news articles that i read are like this new thing was discovered recently and i'll watch a video of it and i'll be like oh that's cool but it doesn't do anything for my life at least hmm. not directly i, I mean in a few years the technology i'm sure trickles down i think this guy's pretty but cynical personally i uh you know I'm maybe not he read too much news uh, yeah he, <laughs> it's certainly possible you can overdose on news i think that's definitely true right and it also depends on, you know, <laughs> yeah. like how broadly or how narrowly you define news. Mm -hmm. Because is a press release from a company that you do business with technically news if it's information about, hey, we're changing this thing about how we do business? Well, it's think new. about think about the word news, like anything that's new, any information that you didn't have previously, it just all of a sudden popped out. Yeah, yeah, so I, I would say definitely there has been news that I have read that has affected me. Last night we were talking about uh, the Oculus Rift and their uh, Google competitor that's uh, it's called uh, Magic Leap, I think, uh, that hasn't really been revealed yet. But these new virtual reality technologies, I mean, had I not seen the news headlines about those things, I, I wouldn't be aware of them. And I... I'm interested in the technology and I'm um, excited about it. And yeah, so and the I, news coverage has helped helped that. I think a lot of, uh, well, I know for me at least, I found out about Bitcoin through news articles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I think this guy's pretty cynical towards uh, towards the news, but nonetheless, it's interesting what he has to say. Yeah. The relevant versus the new is the fundamental battle of our current age, which is what we're just talking about. And I think that that's an important distinction to make. Uh, you well, know, yeah, because I mean, cycling through a list of news articles and figuring out what's relevant to you, probably most of them are not relevant. I'll give him that point, that, mm -hmm. that most of it probably isn't relevant to you. And, uh, you know, you're likely not going to be affected by most of it either. Yeah, but he claims media organizations want you to believe that news offers you some sort of a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. Many fall for that. We get anxious when we're cut off from the flow of news. 
In reality, news consumption is a competitive disadvantage. The less news you consume, the bigger the advantage you have. News has no explanatory power. News items are bubble popping on the surface of a deeper world. Will accumulating facts help you understand the world? Sadly, no. The relationship is inverted. The important stories are non-stories, slow, powerful movements that develop below journalist radar mm. but have a transforming effect. The more news factoids you digest, the less of the big picture you will understand. If more important information leads to higher economic success, we'd expect journalists to be at the top of the pyramid. That's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an interesting observation. Uh, yeah, journalists are not particularly uh, you know, well-paid positions in general. Yeah, I... <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. Um, well, their job is to the the job of the journalist, the job of a news reporter, uh, the job of a news editor. Their job is to fill space with content. Right. Uh, their job is to get you, especially in television news. That's probably the most relevant uh, discussion to have here because it's the most commonly consumed, I think, outside of the internet uh, TV well, and news. Well, then radio news, there's the five-minute news breaks at the top of the hour right. on most talk radio stations. But if you think about it, usually uh, the, the most wealthy people or the most successful ones are the ones creating the news. They're not the ones that are reporting on it. So... If you think about it that way, journalists are really just kind of feeding off of the important things that happen. Well, so their job is to fill space. So if you're a television news show, uh, you have a half an hour. Yes. And, uh, you know, you've got to fill that time. You've got the weather report. You've got, uh, you know, the business report. And then you've got the headlines and, you know, whatever sort of flavor packages you want to add in there. Um, but you've got to put something in there that's gonna that's going to get attention. Uh, so you know, like you said, Daryl, if it bleeds, it leads. Something that's violent, something that's uh, the result of violence, uh, is usually one of the top stories. Right now on Drudge Report, there's uh, some headline about school shooting uh, that happened, I guess, out in what was it? I think Washington State today. So you know, that's one of the the big stories out there. And uh, ultimately, you know, there's not really anything new anyone can learn from a story like that. It's yet another It's person, just depressing. Yeah, yet another person has brought a gun to a school and there's been some killings uh, as a result of that. And yeah, it can be depressing, but ultimately that's not what the news cares about. They don't care about how you take the reports. They just want you to tune in to where you can hang through a commercial break and, and get to... Uh, the news package that you're finding the most interesting. You know, if you ever watch uh, TV news, they'll uh, they'll tease all night long. So during prime time, they'll say Tom tonight at 11. You know, and then they'll give you whatever the shooting in Washington. They will give you the details. And then at 11, they don't always open with the thing they've been teasing the entire right, time. Right, because they want you to watch all of the other stuff. Right. Sometimes they'll make you wait till the end of the news package. Or to the end of the, the whole news program. And then it's only 10 seconds. Yeah, and then it's a real disappointing uh, report. More coming up here in moments. Uh, the toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy Correspondence Courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. 
We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com, advancing the ideas of liberty daily. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free and bring up anything you want right here at 855-450-FREE. There's a cynical article that Ellen is sharing with us from The Guardian about news consumption, which is ironically telling its readers to stop reading the news uh, in the midst of being a news website. So we'll continue that discussion here in a moment. Should you turn yourself off from the news or is there a better way to consume the news i'd like to talk about you know solutions because i agree with some of his critiques and i think that there are ways to limit your news consumption to a healthy amount rather than over consuming it what is a healthy amount of news i don't know you have to figure that out for yourself but well there's actually more irony on the way okay, once great. we talk about health we'll get into that here also speaking of health coffee.freetalklive.com you want to if you're drinking coffee you want to drink the best coffee out there and you can get that some of the best coffee from buzzbox through free talk live in fact you can get a free pound by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. Now, you can get this coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com just by sh uh, paying the shipping cost, and then you get that free pound, and you can cancel your sub uh, subscription at any time. Now, the extra thing that BuzzBox does with Free Talk Live is we've teamed up with Kiva to help people make a better life for themselves in really tough parts of the world to live in. You can, uh, by ordering your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, you can help us fund microloans through Kiva. And so for every 10 listeners that orders through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can fund one new microloan to help somebody make a better life for themselves. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get started with your BuzzBox subscription. You can cancel your subscription at any time, by the way, so you really have nothing to lose except for the fact that you wouldn't be able to try some great coffee. So go try it out at coffee.freetalklive.com. Talking about the news, and The Guardian has the story that Ellen is sharing with us, uh, which is suggesting that uh, news should you should just stop consuming news. And I think that that goes a little bit far. I think that some of his assertions in the story are demonstrably false, uh, he suggests that you can't get any useful information from a news article, that you know none of it will change your life. And I think that that's 
while generally true, I mean, most news is not life-changing or life-altering in any way. It's just data that you're uh, that you're consuming, and most of it's negative data that could bring you to sort of a negative worldview, and uh, that's not a good thing. I mean, I, I like the idea of being positive, and certainly if you spend a lot of your time reading the news, it could be very difficult to see the world in a positive light because all you're consuming are stories about death and destruction and politicians. Uh, so, <laughs> Three very... Yeah very depressing things and if you watch too much of it you might feel overburdened and like you can't go on and um i actually got to a point like that and i just stopped watching news for a while mm -hmm. but then i could never talk to anybody it was like what do you, i i couldn't relate to anybody like what are you talking about i don't know what's going on in the news well that's a good point because uh when you're meeting people in real life uh whether it's at the workplace or wherever it is you spend time uh, they're either going to talk to you about the weather or some sort of sports team right, or things in the news. Small, right? small talk. Yeah. No, just most people, I, I found that most people that aren't politically active don't talk about things that are in the news. They talk about things that are on TV. TV, that's did a good Did you point. watch American Idol? That's what I should have said besides did, did, sports teams. Did you teams, watch right? this other TV show? Oh, did America's you watch Got that? Talent. Yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, so this next point I say is ironic because. This makes me feel quite stressed out when I read this point. News is toxic to your body. It constantly triggers the limbic system. Panicky stories spur the release of cascades of glucocorticoid, which is just a long word for cortisol, which is the stress hormone. This deregulates your immune system and inhibits the release of growth hormones. In other words, your body finds itself in a state of chronic stress. High glucocorticoid levels cause impaired digestion. Like that. Stress like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just felt it just then. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> Code red. Code red. Yeah. In other words, uh, your body finds itself in a constant state of stress uh, that can cause impaired digestion, mm. lack of growth, cell, hair, and bone, nervousness, and susceptibility to infections. News the is killing you. <laughs> <laughs> More <at> ten. <laughs> the other potential side. <laughs> the other potential side effects include fear, aggression, tunnel vision, and desensitization. Wow. News Yikes. increases cognitive errors. News feeds the mother of all cognitive errors. Confirmation bias. In mm. the words of Warren Buffett, what the human being is best at doing is interpreting all new information so that their prior conclusions remain intact. And it's kind of like that old saying, like. If you were a hammer, wouldn't every problem look like a nail to you? Now, this is uh, this is certainly true, especially when it comes to uh, certain news agencies that have a specific spin on them. So, uh, Fox News, kind of commonly seen as the righty news agency, MSNBC, seen as kind of the lefty news agency, and everybody sticks to what they know. Yes, like whatever they're comfortable with. They mm -hmm. just want to know, like, feel that you're they being told are right. what you expect to hear. Yeah. Right? And I, I think that's one of the largest uh, things that drive people to watching news is just, you know, hearing what makes them feel smart. Like, oh, yeah, I already knew this. And of course, I support this thing. New news exacerbates this flaw. We become prone to overconfidence, take stupid risks and misjudge opportunities. It also exacerbates another cognitive error, the story bias. Our brains crave stories that make sense, even if they don't correspond to reality. Any journalist who writes, the market moved because of X, or the company went bankrupt because of Y, <laughs> is an idiot. I'm fed up with this cheap way of explaining the world. Which, I think he is generalizing a lot there, but he makes a good point in that when when you're telling a story about something, you can't blame it on one uh just one variable. Like, yeah. there's hundreds of well, variables that, that can play into something. Right, but there are some stories to where, you know, there is one variable. Some of them, yes. Well, I get where Such she's as, from. you know, when the Iraqi Air Force dropped arms in the wrong base. They actually dropped a shipment of what was supposed to be arms going to their people in the base for the Islamic State. The U.S. military was recently dropping arms for the Kurds, and they dropped it away from where the Kurds were, and the Islamic State fighters wound up getting some. So there's one variable variable there. Right. I don't think there's somebody any in a cargo plane dropping stuff in the wrong place. I don't think there's any hard and fast rules here, but I I can see where the author's coming from. Like on a a statement about the market, 
you know, or some stock or the price of Bitcoin. I had somebody ask me last night, so what do you think Bitcoin's going to do in the next week? And my answer is always the same. I have no idea. I mean, it would be so presumptuous of me to say I have any clue what something like Bitcoin is going to do or, you know, some stock or, you know, you fill in the blank of some sort of unpredictable element that, as Ellen is pointing out, does have to do with not just 100, but maybe countless uh, input mechanisms and, you know, factors and things like that. Right. But, Every individual person could have an effect on something. But what can happen? Happen though, and I think what he's talking about here is when some you know tool bag money guy on uh, television gets on the 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 air and says, "Well, the reason why this stock went down is because such and such did so and so." And then you know, hold on, you, you've got to throw a chicken after you say that, and then <laughs> press some little dingy button that goes. Wee! I actually so, saw an article earlier today, and I'm not. I'm not sure who shared this originally, but it was shared by like six people on my friends list. And it was something about like a car that gets 100 miles to the gallon is not being released in the U.S. because oil companies are funding this, you know, the okay, U.S. I, I know exactly what car you're talking about. It's a Volkswagen that is supposed to get, you know, some astronomical amount of money. The reason it's not being able to be sold in the U.S. has nothing to do with the oil companies. Right. Well, it has to saying. do with the federal safety regulations and because this thing is so light it's made out of stuff that would crumple and so it would never pass the safety test in the u.s right but right. i think that's the point the author's making is that people are like oh big oil companies obviously that's the reason why we can't get well, this right. car if the journalist or the opinion person draws a conclusion they put it out there and then the audience can go to their water cooler at work and act as though they're informed when all they're doing is repeating the misinformation, the speculation uh, that was given on the Right, the and news. there's a bunch of so-called journalists that don't do their homework, yeah. and they do put out these BS stories of, the oil companies don't want you to have this car, when that has nothing to do with it. We'll come back with more. Your thoughts are welcome on the news. 855-450 free. The event you've been waiting for is here. Lumber Liquidators, third annual full flooring yard sale. It's your chance to get first quality, full warranty, direct from the mill flooring at unbelievable closeout prices. Like oak laminate for an incredible 19 cents a square foot. And pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for just $149. Plus beautiful bamboo for 63% less than other stores. Take advantage of our 20 years of savings with 20-month special financing. And get even more unheard of flooring deals in our stores. Full flooring yard sale is Thursday through Monday only. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. DB. Books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. 
the people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Ellen is uh, reading a story from The Guardian advocating you turn off the news. And I like some of the things that are being said about, you know, critiques about the news and how it's, you know, it's kind of vapid and it doesn't really give you useful information in a lot of ways and that, you know, there are always these negative stories that can certainly bring you down. Uh, I think that there's a lot of truth to that. And I think that there's a, there are healthier ways to consume the news and not so healthy ways to consume the news. And I like to talk about what I think at least are, are better ways to do this. Because I definitely share some of the concerns that the uh, the author has. And uh, we do actually have a newsman here with us. Daryl W. Perry is in the studio. He is the creator of FPP.cc, which has a radio division, FPPradio.com, wherein you actually do a five-minute newscast, Daryl, on a seven-day-a-week basis. Seven days a week. I've been doing it since February. So I believe today makes 264 consecutive days. Congratulations. But what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> I need a vacation. <laughs> so, yeah, you've been doing amazing work. And of course, you put together news that tends to come from a liberty oriented perspective. At least that's, you know, it's, you can't avoid it. As a, as a news editor, you're going to select stories that you consider to be relevant right. through based on your worldview. And I think that comes back to uh, what we were talking about before and this confirmation bias, right? That people will consume the news that most is useful or most resonates with them, where the, the viewpoint that is expressed, although news isn't supposed to have a viewpoint by definition, we all know that it always does. Right. And one thing that I find interesting because I'll read several articles a night before selecting the three that get put into the newscast. Mm -hmm. I'll read a story from the Associated Press, the same sort of story being reported on by Reuters and you know some other outlet, and they're all reporting on the same thing, but they're all you know, putting their own little twist on it, as slight as the twist might be. So let's continue with the story here from The Guardian, Ellen. Okay. So his next point is that news inhibits thinking, which I think is pretty bold for a claim, especially since you have to be thinking about it. But <laughs> thinking requires concentration. Concentration requires uninterrupted time. News pieces are specifically engineered to interrupt you. They're like viruses that steal attention for their own purposes. News makes us shallow thinkers, but it's worse than that. News severely affects memory. There are two types of memory. Long-range memory's capacity is nearly infinite, but working memory is limited to a certain amount of slippery data. 
The path from short-term to long-term memory is a choke point in the brain, but anything you want to understand must pass through it. If this passageway is disrupted, nothing gets through. Because this news disrupts concentration, the weak, it weakens comprehension. Online news has an even worse impact. In a 2001 study, two scholars in Canada... They're saying online news is worse than like television news? Is that what they're getting at? Uh, yes, and he explains why. All right. Uh, it I want shows. To hear this. I I would actually, and before you get into it, let me explain why I actually agree. Okay. Because most articles, in my opinion, are way too long. Online, you mean? Online. Okay. I would say that a good article is six hundred words max. You know, like that's not a hard and fast rule. If something goes six hundred and twenty one, I'm not gonna be like, Ah, it's too long. Mm-hmm. I can't read these but last twenty one words. Can you really fit in all the details of a news story in that few words? Yes. Yes, you can. Because you don't need to give the background of Janet Yellen, who's now the chairman of the Federal Reserve, graduated college from Yale mm-hmm. with a GPA of That's blah, true. blah, 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 yeah. and regurgitate and explain yeah. all of the decisions that were made by Ben Bernanke that explain why she made There's her decision today. There's a lot of today. filler. There's that a lot actually, of filler. I agree news. with that. I was actually looking at a different article before this one, and... Um, I I thought about bringing it up, but then I was like, I can't read through this because I was just rereading the history of this person's life all over again mm-hmm. in the article, and it was really irritating. I was just like, get to the point. All right, so why is online news worse, according to this guy, than other forms? Okay, so in a 2001 study, two scholars in Canada showed that comprehension declines as the number of hyperlinks in a document increases. Why? Because whenever a link appears, your brain has to at least make the choice not to click which in itself is distracting. News in, is an intentional interruption system. So I guess the point he's trying to make here is that like, when, when you're looking at a news article online, there's all these blue words, and it's like, oh, I could click on this and read more into the details of this, which you know is actually quite tempting. And uh, in a lot of cases, I will do that. Mm-hmm. But then I'll take like 10 times as long to read the original story, and uh, you kind of lose interest after a while. And um, well, one thing not- that I I just want to throw this piece of advice to anybody that's listening that has a website and they link to things, always, always, always add the little tag so that when somebody clicks the link, it opens in a new window. Yes. Because, because if I click the link and it takes me from your article to something else, chances are I'm not coming back to your article. Some people hate You're that, You're not going to backclick. Like I used to design, when I used to do web design, I used to design that way. Wherever an, a link would take off of uh, take the person off of my site, I would always make it a new window. But that's supposedly really bad web design, so I haven't been doing that But that always uh, seems more preferable because then yeah. you still have yeah, the original Yeah, because then I remember, oh, I've still got this original right. tab over here. Let me go back over to freetalklive.com. Yeah, I tend to agree. what you're doing. I tend to agree with both of you. Uh, it's just that that's what I heard. I heard that's bad web design because some people don't like having new windows pop up. Okay, well, we're, we're online consumers here. <laughs> Would we lie to you? <laughs> so, um, yeah, as far as is online news worse than TV news, I don't know if one study that shows that people get distracted by hyperlinks is enough you know, to really conclude that online news is worse. I would say TV news is worse. Because of the commercials, right? No, not that. I mean, online news, online news has you know, the, the equivalent of commercials. They want you to see the ads on the side of the page or whatever. But uh, TV news is worse because there's, a, uh, there's an editor. There's, uh, there's a news editor who he decides what news you're seeing. And with online news... You select the sources. Right, which, that's you know, true. If you have to, if you have to consume news, and I think that it's useful to to some extent. Although I agree with some of the concerns that overconsumption of news can be bad, and news in general is negative, and you don't want to get into a negative place in your life and believe that the world is evil or that you know that we live in a bad place or whatever. Um, but if you're online, you can sculpt your your news. I mean, so we've got these news readers, for instance. Like uh, I use Feedly. That's a program that I use. Yeah. It used to be Google News or Google Reader. Google that, Reader they shut was that down. really good. Yeah, they shut that down. Uh, I don't but, like Feedly. I use the Dig Reader. Okay, I've heard good, uh, good things about you know that too. It's just I found Feedly after the Google Reader, and so I went to that. Now I don't honestly use it as often you know as I'm sure some people do. 
but it's a nice thing. You know, these aggregators are nice because you can uh, you go to these different sites, blog sites or actual news websites, subscribe to them, and then when you go there, when you go into this program that ag aggregates all these feeds, it shows you what the latest headlines are from all of these different sources. And so there you're getting... You can have as much news as you want, obviously, on the internet, as opposed to the half hour that they serve up to you at the end of the day on the local television news station. And I think that being able to select your sources is a much better thing, although somebody I'm sure could argue that, well, you know, if, if the editor is selecting news stories, maybe you'll find something that you wouldn't have otherwise found. Right. But I actually agree with you. I tend to think that uh, television news is much worse than online news because Absolutely. you have a, a select amount of time. You have... Uh, you know, just one channel or maybe two channels at a time that you can watch, depending on like how many TVs you have. There's always the the captions running across the bottom, and there's flashing lights. Oh yeah. And it's like if you don't catch it, then you know it's gone. Whereas online, you can target your search, you can make it more relevant to you. You have all these different sources you can go to. It's basically accessible anywhere as long as you have an internet connection. And uh, you don't have to look at something if you don't want to. And if you do want to look at something, you can always go back. Use the magical back key we were yeah, just talking yeah. about. I think that uh, it's it's pretty clear that if there's if you're going to consume news, choosing your sources is the way to do it. I mean, it's it feels so old uh, tech to sit through a half hour news uh, news program. Yeah, especially since more and more so, I've been noticing uh, they'll play like five minutes of actual uh, substance, and then they'll have like four minutes of commercials. When's the last time you watched a TV news program? Uh, um. Probably a month ago. Really? Yeah. It, I, I don't, don't do it regularly. I don't remember the last time I watched one. I, I don't do it on purpose. It's just like, if it's on, then I'll watch it. I don't remember when the last time I actually watched television was. Yeah, it's been a while for me, too. I'll encounter it every now and then over at somebody's house or something like that. Or uh, in a government building. Sometimes it's got a TV running there. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. How have you changed your news-consuming habits over the years to be more healthy? You can share your thoughts with us. It's Free Talk Live. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.26 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,233 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $360. 
Antiwar.com reports, speaking at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Undersecretary of the Treasury David Cohen has threatened to impose sanctions on anyone buying oil from the Islamic State. In taking large portions of Syria's oil-producing east and several oil fields in Iraq, the Islamic State has carved out a de facto state with a lot of oil wealth, and in addition to refining it for domestic use, they've reportedly been bankrolling their ongoing expansion by selling it at substantially below market value to middlemen. These middlemen, mostly Turkish and Kurdish buyers who smuggle the oil into their own territory, make a tidy profit. Cohen says such sanctions would be a chance to stop the Islamic State from getting money that way. The U.S. war, particularly in Syria, has focused on blowing up oil refineries and grain silos, trying to damage the internal the Islamic State economy. Yet, the territory of the Islamic State also contains many millions of civilians and oil exports are their economic lifeline as well. Preventing commerce may harm the Islamic State, but it is the sort of inexact warfare that stands to damage many others as well. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The Associated Press reports the number of people who died trying to cross the U.S.-Mexican border has dropped to the lowest level in 15 years as more immigrants turned themselves in to authorities in Texas and fewer took their chances with the dangerous trek across the Arizona desert. The U.S. government recorded 307 deaths in the 2014 fiscal year that ended in September, the lowest number since 1999. In 2013, the number of deaths was 445. The Border Patrol's Rio Grande Valley sector finished the 2014 budget year with 115 deaths, compared with 107 in the Tucson sector. It marks the first time since 2001 that Arizona has not been the deadliest place to cross the border. Arizona has long been the most dangerous border region because of the triple-digit temperatures, rough desert terrain, and the sheer volume of immigrants coming into the state from Mexico. But more immigrants are now entering through Texas and not Arizona. Border enforcement officials say that the lower numbers are in part due to increased rescue efforts as well as Spanish language media campaigns discouraging Latin Americans from walking across the border. Immigrant rights advocates are skeptical that it is solely the Border Patrol's efforts contributing to the decrease in deaths. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Reuters reports the National Park Service said on Thursday that it was investigating a New York artist as a suspect for graffiti vandalism in parks across the western United States after she posted at least one picture of herself defacing a protected park on social media. One photo obtained by the blog Modern Hiker and shared with the National Park Service shows the artist putting the finishing touches on an acrylic drawing of a cigarette-smoking woman at Utah's Canyonlands National Park in June. Other photographs show the graffiti such as a woman with blue hair at Oregon's Crater Lake and a bald man with a snake protruding from his mouth at California's Yosemite, all signed Creepy Things and dated 2014. The woman is suspected for vandalism in at least 10 national parks, including the Grand Canyon in Arizona and California's Joshua Tree, where she has been seen in a photograph crawling among a protected cave painting. The hiking block sent the photos it gathered earlier this month by screenshots from the suspect's Instagram and Tumblr accounts to the National Park Service on Wednesday, sparking the investigation. A spokeswoman for the National Park Service said the artist has not yet been arrested or charged with a crime. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
addition to creating a Twitter account, Pope Benedict XVI plans to further connect with Christian youth by giving up on Catholicism. Quote, in order to really relate to modern teens, he needs to make religion a much smaller part of his busy life, just like they do. And it's already working. Tweets like, can someone go to church for me, LOL, hashtag sleeping in, have been retweeted over a million times by lazy Catholic teens, while tweets like, if God was real, how come there's so much murder, and I'm still Catholic, I just don't go to church or believe in Jesus, have been especially successful with college students who are questioning the church's teaching. It's really cool to see that the Pope is as active on social media and as skeptical about God as I am. Look, he just tweeted, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. That's totally how I feel. Pope Benedict's aides say his next project involves reaching out to Muslims by sitting down with Islamic leaders and proclaiming his undying allegiance to Allah. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you would like. Just dial in toll-free. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy what you find there. Those uh, other talk show hosts in the business, they like to charge you money for their websites. Ours is free. I bet you'll find more for free at freetalklive.com than you will behind the paywalls of some of those other talk shows. So go and check it out. Get interactive. You can actually create the content right there on the front page at freetalklive.com. You can vote up what you like. You can vote down stuff you don't like. It's all totally free. So with you in the studio here, it's Ian. Ellen. And Daryl. Ellen has been sharing with us a, kind of an a, opinion piece from The Guardian, which is a UK news source. And the opinion piece is sort of contradictorily, contradictorily saying that uh, you should stop reading the news. So t turn off our website and stop reading it is essentially what this person is arguing for. And he's making some, I think, persuasive points about the news. In fact, Ellen, would you mind doing a quick uh, rundown of, if our listeners are just tuning in, some of the bullet points, I guess, that we've already jumped through here? Sure. Uh, the author, Rolf DeBelli, which I wonder if he quit his job after writing this, <laughs> but he claims that news is misleading, it's irrelevant, has no explanatory power, is toxic to your body, increases cognitive errors, inhibits thinking, and works like a drug. Well, we haven't covered the last one yet, but that's so far what he said, all bad things. Yeah, <laughs> and I think there's something to some of it. I think some of the critiques he has go a little bit too far, uh, but you can definitely have too much news, and news isn't really uh, designed to inform in any sort of in-depth way. It is designed to just simply be consumed. It's something that uh, they want you to consume more of. They, you know, stay tuned for the latest on Ebola. Uh, even though, you know, is it really going to change your life to know that there's somebody in New York City now who has Ebola? Are you going to stop going outside as a result of that? I mean, how is that going to really uh, affect you? So, all that said, though, we do have the latest on Ebola coming up here on Free Talk Live. That more people have been married to Kim Kardashian than have died from Ebola in the United States? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> what is there, one death so far? One. One death. And she's been married like two or three times. So, um, but we're not a news program, by the way, here on Free Talk Live, uh, nor do we pretend to be a news program. Free Talk Live is a show that is a uh, an open phones panel discussion where we will talk about some things that happen to be in the news, but we never have claimed to be unbiased or never have claimed to give both sides of a story here on Free Talk Live. So keep that in mind as you listen. Let's continue with the list of alleged uh, bad things about news here. Okay, so his next point, news works like a drug. As stories develop, we want to know how they continue. With hundreds of arbitrary storylines in our heads, this craving is increasingly compelling and hard to ignore. Scientists used to think that a dense, the dense connections formed among the 100 billion neurons inside our skulls were largely fixed by the time we reached adulthood. Today, we know that that is not the case. Nerve cells routinely break old connections and form new ones. The more news we consume, the more we exercise the neural circuits devoted to skimming and multitasking while ignoring those used for reading deeply and thinking with profound focus. More news consumers, mm. even if they used to avoid book readers, have lost the ability to absorb lengthy articles or books. 
After four or five pages, they get tired, their connection or their concentration vanishes, they become restless. Oh man, I know this. I mean, I was uh, there was an article yesterday that I wanted I really was interested in reading. It was uh, the headline was about Google, I guess the head boss man over there uh, met with Julian Assange Ooh, and it was written, interesting. Yeah, it was written by Julian Assange basically saying Google is not what you think it is. Oh yeah, I I actually had read that a couple of weeks ago. It's a long article and I found myself getting fatigued very quickly by it. Um, and ultimately, I didn't read the whole thing. I just sort of skimmed through it and read some parts of it, and I feel like I got something out of it. Uh, like, you know, Google is bad. You know, essentially, <laughs> it was kind of the message there, and that essentially Google's uh, top dog is well connected with uh, people in politics, people in D.C., the NSA, and other you know federal government goon agencies. So that's that's kind of what I got out of it. I don't feel like I had to read the whole thing in order to uh, get the gist of it, but at the same time, maybe I missed some really important information. Maybe I don't know. you're just a victim of modern day uh, news agencies. It's possible, but I'm also <laughs> I don't know, there's the uh, short little thing that runs from Holland Cook. The uh, I, I forget what. The little survival segment. speech survival speech where there's one that says there's no such thing as attention span if you're entertaining enough mm-hmm. and then he says just ask jerry seinfeld he's kept us from flipping <laughs> channels for decades that's true but and his show is that, about nothing so on that article you know as much as you would have wanted to read the entire thing, it just wasn't holding your attention. And it's so difficult to not skim when something's really long. Well, and I, you know, Daryl's making a good point. I mean, it's certainly new, Julian Assange isn't a professional writer, right? Um, and it but was there are a professional rambling... writers that have things that are just long and rambly that I could never read. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I'm also, I like, you know, I'm busy, right? So right. It, it, you were saying earlier, Daryl, I don't know if it was on the air or off the air, that you feel like uh, news pa- news writings should be less than 600 words. Yes. Um, and that's a good way to get news out. But Assange was sort of telling a story. He was right. telling a, you know, a detailed story about how he came to meet Eric Schmidt and then, you know, who came with him and what happened at the meeting. And then what he learned afterward was a really bulk part of the article about Eric Schmidt, the founder, not the founder, but the, the CEO uh, of Google and it would just it just was too much for me. I have you know all kinds of other things that are vying for my time and, and that could be a factor here that people today are busier than ever. I mean we're more time challenged people than uh, than ever in the past. There are more things pulling at us in any given moment, whether it be you know your kids or your job or you know some sort of deadline that you've got to hit. Uh, well, he would actually argue the opposite. Really? He's saying it's not because you got older, your schedule became more onerous. It's because the physical structure of your brain has changed. I don't know. Yeah, my well, schedule is a lot busier now than it was when I was a teenager. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, that's certainly true. You have more time to waste, more time to you know, more true, well less time to fill. Well, I guess when you, you would say compare. You know, like your average day or my average day to the average day of someone from 115 years ago. Okay, they were bu- busting hump in the sun all day. That's right. certainly true. They didn't have the, you know, quote unquote leisure time that we do. Well, nor did they have access to information in the same way that we do either. Right. So here, um, you know, I could, while I could take some of the time I'm doing work and convert it into leisure time if I wanted to, then I would just get backed up on my work. So I'm not really interested in doing that. Like right now, I'm backed up on, I've got dozens of emails I haven't gotten to yet because I've been doing Keenvention stuff, uh, you know, and that doesn't mean that I'm not doing things I shouldn't be doing, like being on Facebook. Right. But then at the same time, every time I feel like I shouldn't be on Facebook, I'll see a reason that justifies me being on Facebook. Like I'll find some good show prep. Right. Or something like that. Right. Well, actually, that's what his next point is, is that news wastes time. If you read the newspaper for 15 minutes each morning, then check the news for 15 minutes during lunch and 15 minutes before you go to bed, then add five minutes here and there when you're at work, then count distraction and refocusing time, you'll lose at least half a day every week. Information Mm. is no longer a scarce commodity, but attention is. You are not that irresponsible with your money, reputation, or health. Why give your your mind away? Which is a good point. Persuasive. Yeah. News makes us passive. News stories are overwhelmingly about things you cannot influence. 
The daily repetition of news about things we can't act upon makes us passive. It grinds us down until we adopt a worldview that is pessimistic, desensitized, sarcastic, with. and fat fatalistic. Yeah, this I really think is the real problem with the news, and it can't be fixed. There's nothing that can be done about it. I and mean, as we were pointing out before, Ellen, you said, well, a, a story about someone having a great day at you know, at work or, you know, picking up the kids from school or whatever. It was really great. Uh, you know, we got some ice cream. Uh, this isn't <laughs> yeah. really. That's know, what the onion is for. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't really, you know, useful information. It's also not interesting information to most people. Uh, and, of course, the onion is brilliant parody of news, uh, satire. In fact, you know, I love how on the onion uh, radio news or the onion video clips that they have, sometimes they'll, uh, they'll say at the end, Keep checking theonion.com for the latest, <laughs> even though they never update any of their news stories. So, like, if you were to actually keep checking theonion.com, you'd never see any sort of update on their uh, their news stories. We'll come back with more here in moments. Uh, your thoughts are certainly welcome. You can take control of the airwaves on Free Talk Live. America was built by people with a few dollars and a dream. And while many don't know it, there's one path to success that still only requires a dream and about $10. That's right. If your dream is to start or grow your business, something as simple as the right business card could make all the difference. And today at Vistaprint.com, you can get 500 full-color business cards for only $9.99. That's right. Only $9.99. Just go to Vistaprint.com and enter promo code 8989 at checkout. That's Vistaprint.com, promo code 8989. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. I've been told no in many way? different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this Hey! Oh my God! Unbelievable! Because you're scared. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men. On the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. 
Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free. Bring up anything at 855-450-FREE. Though we've been talking about the news business and how it is that, according to the author that Ellen is sharing with us from The Guardian, that news is bad for you. Maybe you should cut it off. I don't know if you should cut it off entirely, but at the same time, I think this guy's been making some pretty good points, though I don't uh, fully agree. You're welcome to share your thoughts with us here. Also, you can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. And is privacy dead? Well, not if you have anything to say about it. On November 7th and 8th, coders, privacy specialists, and idea people of all stripes will join together for Hack the Trackers, a transparency and privacy hackathon brought to you by Ghostery. You can enter online or join them in person in New York City to create tools that make the web a more transparent place or help users manage how much data they share. The hacks will be judged by experts and voted on by an online community. Winners will receive a prize package including the all-new Black Phone, a secure by design smartphone for people like you who recognize a need for privacy and want a simple, secure place to start. Participation is free and registration is open now. Visit hackthetrackers.com for more information. That's hackthetrackers.com. We'll get to the final point of Ellen's story here from The Guardian about the news business. But first, let's go to Skype, where we've got Nathan on the line in Texas. Nathan, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Hey, you're on the air. Uh, I'm really... I'm really glad that you brought this news story in, Ellen. It's one of my all-time favorite stories, not only because it's a news story about why you shouldn't read the news, <laughs> but um, it's the reason that uh, when Stephanie Murphy brought this article to my attention last year, it's the reason that I disconnected from the news. Hmm. Uh, and I've never been happier. Really? Well, tell, tell us about the, the change. I mean, were you a news junkie, as, uh, as they call it, prior to disconnecting? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that, but I grew up in a family of news junkies. Mm. Uh, my uh, great grandfather was a police officer. He basically watched the news every day till the day he died. And, uh, you know, other people in my family did that. And I see all the things this article is talking about, you know, this, the passivity, how stressed it makes you. Um, and there's one, and this is uh, bringing to the point that I wanted to raise, which is, uh, I guess the, art, the article dances around it a little bit, um, but it doesn't actually say it, which is that news is uh, – it, it promotes a, a kind of authoritarian uh, attitude because, you know, the news is basically you, you sit down and you hit, listen to what the newscaster says, and he's going to tell you what to think. Right. And, and I, I, I remember, never really liked that. Sorry. I, I remember covering this once on ALP, and it was a, an episode that we did about how everybody – is turning to experts now for information and they're not going out and doing their own research. They're mm. relying on, you know, these people who somehow hold a, a high position of authority on a certain topic and they know everything about this and they'll be able to tell you and you can't know as much as them because you're not an expert. Well, at the same time, I right, mean, you right. at some point have to rely on experts because unless you want to go and do all of the research yourself that the experts have already done. Like if, you know, some people have done a scientific study, you can either choose to believe their results or you can try to replicate right. the study and, yourself. And there, there is certainly a good use for uh, experts in certain things, but when it comes to things like news articles, you can't just rely on one source. You well, know, right. You, can sele you should select your experts, and with the news right, story, that, that, they've selected the expert for you. Right. right. It's, right, it's already predetermined. At. That's what I was getting at. So some of the because... experts that I've seen YouTube clips of where that what well, one of the guys from that uh, duck show apparently <laughs> is now an expert on Islam oh, and no. has been all over like Fox News as an expert on mm. Islam. He's just a racist or whatever, right? What's his yeah. <laughs> or a bigot, I guess. <laughs> but because he, so. you know, like saw a TV show with a Muslim in it one time. He's now an expert on Islam. Yeah, and I think that, Nathan, you're onto something here, the idea that news has this authoritative demeanor. In fact, sometimes they'll 
like news stations will call themselves the news authority. <laughs> uh, you know, just to, to sort of position themselves as though they've got the answers. And uh, and they always, almost always, news companies, especially the larger they are, uh, the more mainstream media they are, the more they cede to government uh, so-called authorities. You know, they'll uh, whatever the government press release says, most news agencies will just go ahead and quote it verbatim. The authorities say, da, 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 and then they'll report whatever information they've been handed in a press release by the local uh, sheriff as though it were the, the truth. Right. Yes, and I've, right. I've heard from some people that say they know a bit about the news industry where they have a, a liaison there that will tell news agencies what they can and cannot report on and what they have to say about a certain topic. You know, like sure. if, if you're forced to report on something because it's blown out of proportion, you know, in the public eye, then only say this part. Don't say something that could incite a riot. Daryl's got a story that's related to that about a Chicago newspaper, is it? That uh, is- Chicago newspaper reporter, 19-year veteran reporter. It's getting a little cozy with one of the local politicians. Well, the, the reporter actually quit his job because the newspaper is getting cozy with one of the gubernatorial candidates. So, uh, Nathan, anything else you want to share tonight? Oh yeah, well that uh, that uh, it's interesting that you mentioned that because uh, you know Nima Vidati used to be used to be a newsman, and uh, one of the re- he has a great interview with the Bad Quaker where he talks about you know why he got out of it and this kind of uh, this kind of uh, it, it's something that confused me for a long time. It's it's not that the news is centrally controlled by you know men smoking cigars in a smoke filled room. But it's it's a lot of times it's just what sells, it's what's popular. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Nima talks about the guy at his station wanting to preserve the brand. So, for example, he would never talk about the drug war or stories about a you know a prisoner looking for an next job or whatever because it didn't do well in the focus groups. So let, and, let's uh, real quick, Nathan, let's talk about that uh, you know guy with the cigar in the smoke filled room that supposedly <laughs> controls everything. Because I've seen the YouTube clip where somebody has gone through and they picked out a bunch of different news clips from across the country of news reporters that were doing lazy reporting, Mm -hmm. where they all introduced a story the same way. And like the first 30 seconds, they're all reading the same thing. And they're passing this off as, here's proof that the New World Order controls all the media. Mm. And I look at it and I'm like, no, they're just being lazy and they're all reading the same Associated Press article. Well, well, that confused me for a long time because there is a slant. There is kind of this message uh, that you get from the mainstream news. And it took me a while to finally figure it out. But uh, Gardner Goldsmith put it really well on a show last week. It's kind of like a movie director. If you think about the way a movie director directs a movie, he controls the order of the scenes, what scenes are shot, Mm -hmm. what scenes are cut how people are standing, the lighting, you know, there are all these things. And uh, the news is kind of like that. When they put together the stories, they decide on the order, what stories are read, what stories are read the most, how often, you know, uh, who's interviewed, all this kind of stuff. And so they never have to actually lie to you. Uh, They can just lead you to believe things that aren't true because they they select everything. They can leave out important information. Absolutely. Nathan, good call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. And uh, he says he's given up news, but thankfully he's still listening to Free Talk Live because, as I pointed out, this is and not a new like show. And sounds like he's listening to LRN a good bit, too. Yeah, that's true. I hear him call other uh, LRN programs as well. Uh, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you know, if you're going to consume news, because Daryl does his news show, uh, it's a seven-day-a-week thing. It's only five minutes, your news, right. Daryl. So, And you can listen to it while you're going and doing other things, which is a nice thing about radio. More coming up. At 30dayfoodsupply.com, you can now purchase a -a one-of-a-kind product not available anywhere else. A meatless burger dry mix in four delicious flavors. With our new Oregon Trail Foods vegan burgers, all you do is add water and fry. They need no refrigeration. They're packaged in Mylar bags with an oxygen absorber for a long shelf life. They're non-GMO. They're gluten, soy, nut, and chemical-free, but they're loaded with flavor. And a good source of carbs and protein, yet low in sodium. Flavors include Italian, spicy Mexican, 
Mexican, six vegetable, and black bean olive. Go to 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010 and order today. Eat them every day, take them camping, or save them for an emergency. Check them out at 30dayfoodsupply.com and click on the vegan burger icon. That's 30dayfoodsupply.com where all of our products are produced in Oregon by Oregon Trail Foods, 30dayfoodsupply.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from SurvivalSpeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Just dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Maybe you used to be a news junkie, or maybe you still are. You can't get off of the news. Uh, we're talking about some of the... Oh, sorry, Daryl, try that one more time. i got to get my fix, man. And now you're being fix. censored. <laughs> So um, Ellen has a detailed uh, opinion piece. I wouldn't call this news. Uh, this is an opinion piece featured on the Guardian website. Unless it's new to you. Well, it is new to me, although apparently Nathan had uh, heard this before. Is this a, kind of an older piece? Maybe a year It or was so? written in 2013. Okay. So still, though, the points are, are valid, and uh, it's an interesting discussion that we've been having about some of the detriments of uh, watching and listening to the news and how to better com, uh, consume the news. I would say radio is a better way to consume news because, well, it's easier to do other things while listening to the radio. You yes. can uh, you can drive to work and you can listen to Daryl Perry do his five-minute newscast at the top of the hour on LRN.FM or just download the podcast of it from FPPRadio.com. Uh, and that's a way to get a little bit of news 
and not have to monopolize your time. Like if you're right. sitting watching television, there's not much else you can really do while you're watching television. There's the distraction of the, you know, even if you intend to do something else while watching television, Sometimes it's hard to do that because the moving picture will draw your eye. At least that's how my experience is. Yeah, like it's very a, distracting. If I go to a bar and I'm um, there with friends, I don't want to sit facing the TV, which of course is sometimes hard in bars because there's damp TVs everywhere, because I find myself moving my eyes up towards the television. Even though I don't care what's going on on the TV, I want to listen to what Ellen is telling me in the bar. It's loud in the bar. If I'm watching Ellen, I can make better eye contact with her. Maybe I can better understand her because I can see her lips moving at the same time. But no, my eyes are going up to the television set where there's some you know, stupid newscast on or a sports team playing or whatever. So, yeah, I think radio is preferable to television. And I also think that Internet is preferable to, um, well, you know, I would put it on the same level as radio because with the Internet, you do have to give your full attention to it. But at least with the Internet, you can choose the news that you're consuming versus right. what some editor has decided to give to you. But or if you're still- watching a a news video, you can at least look at a different tab at the same time. So it's the multitasking, really, that's the valuable part. But there's still an editor that is deciding on the internet. Well, because sure. every website has an editor. That's right. So, you know, there, there's always somebody that's deciding what gets published somewhere. Well, you know, not necessarily true with Reddit, right? So, like, with freetalklive.com, anybody can post to that site, and then it's the other users who sort of perform the editing function by voting up or voting down. So, in some cases, it's not an individual person who is deciding right, those but things. whatever link is getting posted, somebody running the website that is being linked to made a decision to allow that article to be posted. That's true. Um, at freekeen.com, the decision is always, almost always, yes. I did pull a story recently at freekeen.com as you know, one of the people who has editor uh, sort of class ability on the website. But I've hardly ever done that over the years, maybe three times or something like that. I don't remember the last time. I did. Actually, no, I do remember the last time. It was a few years ago when Brad Jardis went to uh, the school Plymouth campus. Plymouth State. Right. He went to the school campus, and uh, he had been ordered by a judge to not carry a weapon on the campus. He had intended to do this sort of civil disobedience act of carrying openly a firearm onto campus, and uh, he was ordered to not do that. And part of the judge's order was that uh, he had to post something to freekeen.com in order to satisfy the judge's order. And so because I was so upset that some judge would order one of the bloggers at Free Keen to post something to the website as, you know, part of you need to do this. Uh, I forget exactly what he had to post. I think he had to post the order yeah, uh, to to the website so all of us would know or something like that or all That's of his ridiculous. associates. That's ridiculous. It was outrageous to me. So when Brad posted that, I went in and I removed it. I, so, I would do the same thing, yeah. actually. <laughs> so, so that's one time that I've removed a story, and that was just to you know make the judge angry and like, okay, well, he did post it. So Brad did go ahead and follow your order, yeah. and right. then I went ahead and removed his post. <laughs> yeah, well, it's and, kind of right, out of, because out you of were his under jurisdiction. No order. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? It's kind of outside of his jurisdiction, what you do, if well, you're not part of the order. Right, if he wants to write another order and then force me to repost it, then I might have refused to do that, and that would have been an interesting uh exercise in free speech and free journalism but he didn't do anything like that so that one was uh, dead where it laid recently there was a post made at freekeen.com where uh there was some drone video that was posted that was taken during pumpkin fest okay and it just to me wasn't worth a post uh when i watched it it was the drone on the street the drone flying upwards straight up Hovering straight up above the buildings, you could see that there were men on top of the buildings, but you couldn't see what they had. You couldn't see the items. You couldn't see if there were any sniper rifles, because that was the idea, was that there might right. be snipers up there. There were snipers last year at Pumpkin Fest this year. Were there snipers? Well, there were men who looked like they could have been snipers, but the video didn't reveal they had. You couldn't tell what they had. So right. I just felt like it, so the, the drone went up. It hovered up for like, I don't know, 30 seconds. 
and then went back down to the street level. And uh, that, to me, wasn't worth putting a post up. This wasn't really news. There was nothing. There was no new information you could glean from that particular piece of video. And as pretty as it was of a shot, you know, you get to see the trees and everything, and it looked nice because it's fall in, in New England. But it wasn't news. So I did make the executive decision to uh, to ask the person to remove that, that post. But there are some. My point in bringing that up, Daryl, is there are some sites where there really isn't editorial control, right? Like, I can exercise that control if I want to, but I've almost never done right, that. Right, but all of the writers act as their own editors, well, now you're really, I mean, you're mincing, uh, you know, words here, I think. that, that That's, okay, yeah. No, the the point to, I'm making is They're not that, going to write something they disagree with or that they would edit out in the end because they think it's too controversial. Like, if they are writing the piece, they're going to post it. The, right. Yeah. But, no, my, my point is that somebody somewhere is making a decision. You can't find information online that has not been published. Okay. So, Somebody somewhere had to make a decision to publish something. Sure. Okay. I, that's so so totally far from what I thought uh, the point was that you were making. No. That, you know, ultimately there's an editor deciding on things. But with the internet, you can be the you know decider as far as what content that you get. Right. So you know, I've seen hundreds of articles where people will totally misreport the truth or not even link over to you know anything to. To verify. Sort of verify their yeah. claim. And, you know, all of those people are acting as their own editors to publish BS, basically. Sure. And nobody is verifying anything. So you can find whatever you want online. It, you could find oh, something yeah. that says that, you know, like looking at a cell phone gives you testicle cancer. No doubt. I mean, you can't rely on anybody online to tell you the truth. That's why it's nice. Because you can select your sources, you can select who you trust, you can check on your own volition. But And you, know, you can get many sources. You can, but that doesn't mean any all of them will be right. It doesn't mean one of them will be right. And also, just because there is an editor who's a professional doesn't mean they're going to get it right either. Right. right. So, I mean, uh, you, you know, we've had plenty of news coverage covering various different activism here in the Keene area. And there's almost always some sort of fact that they get wrong. Uh, there's only been one time... Two times. Mother Jones Magazine and the New York Times front page piece that came out where I was actually impressed with the level of fact checking they did. Uh, the Mother Jones guy actually had that. They actually have a fact checker. So they have their guy who wrote the piece. Then it was sent over to a person to check the facts of the piece, which I'd never had that happen before. Wow. Usually it's just, you know, some journalist takes notes and then they put an article out and they get some stuff wrong. Uh, but so that happened. And then uh, the guy who was from the Times called me multiple times to kind of check the things that he was going to be saying. Right, right. Well, I always imagine there's like the reporter. He he goes and interviews a few people. He writes up a story. He takes it to the editor. The editor's like, you sure that's right, Johnny? He's like, yep. OK, <laughs> well, let's publish it. It probably is that simple in most <laughs> cases. So there's one more point. Is yes. That right? All right, we're going to get to that here. Tease us with what the uh, the headline is. Though. So the next point is that news kills creativity. Ooh. All right. We'll find out if that's true. Eight fifty five four fifty free, and you can share with us what you think about the news. Tell us your story. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Take control of the airwaves on Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. 
and it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season, like oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Free Talk Live. You know, and this is a realistic view. Uh, I mean, look, your kids are going to do drugs. Would you rather them do drugs with pimply-faced kids driving around town? Or would you rather them smoke pot in your house where you know what they're doing? I'm not saying I love the idea of my little boy who's three growing up and smoking pot. I don't. I would prefer he didn't. But I know that the human animal, as it is, likes to have its mind altered. And he's my son. He's probably going to do these things. And I'll tell you, I was in a lot of dangerous situations that if my parents had tried something different, maybe things would have worked out differently. I don't know. I'm not blaming them or anything like that. I'm just saying that we need to we, we need to try new things. This war on drugs, not working. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want here at 855-453. That's 855-450. 3733. We've got Skype. Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. You do it that way, you'll sound better than you would if you were on the phone, most likely. And another tip for you if you've got a smartphone, you can install the Skype app on your smartphone, then call us as long as you've got data. Call us on Skype rather than the phone version of the phone, and you'll sound better than you would on your phone normally. So that's another tip for you. Skype username is lrn.fm. With you in the studio tonight, Ian here. Alan. And Daryl. We'll get to the final point of the Guardian piece, which has been, uh, you know, it's kind of this uh, treatise against news. Uh, this guy who's editorializing on a news publication is saying that you shouldn't be uh, listening to or watching the news or reading the news because it's bad for you. He's gone through several different reasons why he believes that to be true. But first, let's go to you with your thoughts. Lucas is in North Carolina. Uh, Lucas, you're on Free Talk Live. Well, I can agree that there's a problem with news and there's a problem with the way that, that, the way that we use news. Uh, I think that the idea that we should all just not pay attention to news is is kind of ludicrous. Uh, What I see is a big shift in our society from the 60s, uh, 50s and 60s, and and any time earlier than that, when as a society we had identified members of our society that we placed trust in for news, but those people we did not place our trust in as experts in everything. Anchors in the 1960s and the 1970s 
were experts at asking other experts questions. They did not pretend to know epidemiology or uh, how nuclear weapons work or spread or what Amtrak is or how to solve the problem of terrorism. It used to be that anchors would ask experts questions about these things. And now anchors and hosts, whether it's radio or TV or editorialists in newspapers, these people think they are as smart as all of the experts. Hmm. The fact is, if you want to be an expert in a scientific field, for example, back in 1979, and this number will stun you, there were more than a million scientific articles published every year in 1979. So there is nobody who knows everything about science or even about one field of science. And if anybody on television says they know why Tom Frieden at the CDC, who is an expert in epidemiology, is a world-renowned expert in epidemiology. If anyone who's the host of a news show says he doesn't know what he's talking about, no, I'm sorry, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Mm. Tom Frieden is the expert, and unless you've had 25 years or more of studying how diseases spread and study Ebola, you just don't know what you're talking about like he does. And we need to discover, rediscover as a society, this is a societal problem in my opinion, what we think experts are because we need them. You cannot put a man on the moon without experts in something. You cannot build uh, a satellite communication system to have cell phones without experts in something. Just picking up uh, the internet and reading some articles will not make you capable of doing those things. And we need to, as society again, yeah. rediscover the value of experts. We've I think that, uh, them, as, and, and I, I like them. where you're coming from, Lucas, as, uh, as a talk show host, frequently uh, we've pointed out on this show that we're just people behind microphones. Uh, we don't know much. About, we know a little bit about a lot of things, but we're certainly not experts on anything except doing maybe talk radio. And uh, <laughs> right, I couldn't rebuild this laptop if yeah. I dropped it on the ground and it shattered. So I think it's important to to stay humble uh, in this business as well. And I think you're right that a lot of these uh, people out there believe that because they're behind a microphone, it goes to their. It really seems to go to their head. Does Rush Limbaugh? Really Really believe that he's you know can take on God with one hand tied behind his back, half his brain. Oh yeah, whatever the hell it is, he's, whatever he says, this is sort of ridiculous well, statement. An, an important point here is what these people rely on who degrade experts is they rely on common sense, and common sense. Don't get me wrong, is an extraordinarily valuable trait. Has been extraordinarily valuable to the survival of our species. But most of the activities that experts engage in are totally non-commonsensical. They're activities that are referred to by experts in logic uh, and science as counterintuitive. Mm, yes. In fact, practically every scientific idea since uh, Einstein's special theory of relativity is counterintuitive. It's not common sense. It's not what you so would expect. Example, in point of fact, it's the opposite right. in some cases of what you would expect. Exactly. So if, if you drop your lock, laptop and it doesn't work, how to fix it is by no means common sense. No doubt. And you wouldn't be able to fix it just by being you know, experienced at life. You need an expert in how computer chips work and how electronics work, maybe in, in how to repair plastics. You might need a number of experts to actually make that computer whole the way it was again. Excellent points tonight, Lucas. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. If you are an expert on something, you're welcome to call in and uh, bring up whatever's on your mind, or even if you don't know a damn thing about what you're talking about, we'll let you ramble for a little bit, at least until you get boring. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We don't even have a requirement that you be sober to call Free Talk Live. Anybody can do it here. Uh, we've got Skype, by the way, where we're going to go to TNL, calling from I don't know where. You're on Free Talk Live. I'm calling from Minnesota here. Welcome, sir. You're on the air. Um, say, I just uh, today, kind of off topic, but I watched uh, the Victimless Crime Spree video. Today. Oh, excellent. And uh, big props, a great video. And uh, my, myself, I've been um, uh, involved in some victimless crimes. Um, smoked some pot tonight. Hmm. 
You know what? Tell you what, you're getting a real bad connection there, uh, Tino. We're going to see if maybe that'll clear up. He's been involved in victimless crimes, not an uncommon thing to find in the United States. We're going to check back with him maybe uh, here in a little bit and see how he sounds. But, Ellen, let's wrap up the story from The Guardian with the final point on uh, why news is so bad for you, allegedly. All right. So this final point, I think, is a little bit more convincing than the rest of them. News kills creativity. Finally, things we already know limit our creativity. This is one reason that mathematicians, novelists, composers, and entrepreneurs often produce their most creative works at a young age. Their brains enjoy a wide, uninhabited space that emboldens them to come up with and pursue novel ideas. I don't know a single truly creative mind who is a news junkie. Not a writer, a composer, mathematician, physicist, scientist, musician, Mm. designer, architect, or painter. Yeah, if you were a news junkie, then how would you have time to do anything else? Right, and also your ideas wouldn't be original. They'd just be based on what you've you know, seen. stories that have been regurgitated five times. Well, there's an argument that there are no original stories, but that's another uh, discussion. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, so, so yeah, news junkies, I mean, by definition, a news junkie, that's their hobby. That's their habit. That's something that they spend all of their time on whenever they're not doing whatever it is they earn money to keep f- food coming into their face. And const- and also, okay, if so you that- have people, other people's thoughts coming in and out of your mind all the time, how are you coming up with your own? Mm, good so point. to say that you know, just because a news junkie, that's what they do in their spare time, therefore they can't be creative, maybe their job is to be an artist. But... You know, obviously they're not going to be a Picasso type artist, but Mm -hmm. maybe they, you know, draw political cartoons. There's a bunch of people that draw political cartoons. That's true. And some of those people are somewhat famous. So to say that people can't have any sort of artistic ability and also be a news junkie is just completely absurd. All right. You make a good point there. All right. Well, I guess we shouldn't jump to total extremes and say. And and it's also, you know, sort of asinine to say that. Only the most intelligent people create things when they're children. There have been people that, you know, wound up not creating a best-selling book until they were in their 40s or 50s. Right. Well, I mean, as far as this entire article goes, it's very extreme in that it, it says news is terrible in all of these ways. But I think he makes it so extreme so that we get the gist of what he's saying. I it's mean, we might not have to take it very literally, yeah. but at least it does make an impression. I think he believes what he's saying, though. I don't think that he... Maybe. I, mean, I think he really is this virulently anti-news. On the other hand, I know a bunch of viciously uncreative minds who consume news like drugs. If you want to come up with old solutions, read news. If you are looking for <laughs> new solutions, don't. Society needs journalism, but in a different way. Investigative journalism is always relevant. We need reporting that polices our institutions and uncovers truth. But important findings don't have to arrive in the form of news. Long journal articles and in-depth books are good, too. I've non I've now gone without news for four years, so I can see, feel, and report the effects of this freedom firsthand. Less disruption, less anxiety, deeper thinking, more time, more insight. It's not easy, but it's worth it. I find it hard to believe that in four years he has not consumed any type of news in any manner. Uh, maybe in passing. So, interesting. I do agree with his assessment that news does need to uh, police the institutions. And that's one thing that we do at freekeen.com and fpp.cc. There's more coming up here in moments on Free Talk Live. Is gun ownership about target shooting, hunting, and self-defense, or is there more to it? Oath Keepers and Brayburn Entertainment present Molon Labe, inspired by the works of Edwin Vieira Jr., explains why we need to revitalize the state militia system. Featuring Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Larry Pratt, and Stuart Rhodes. Available on DVD at moviepubs.net, oathkeepers.org, and gunowners.org. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. 
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink, providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,235, silver around $17.19, and Bitcoin is trading around $352.44. Today's precious metal prices are brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from SovereignMiners.com. Interested in mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Well, Sovereign Miners has you covered. All purchases come with a free script ISIC miner. Visit SovereignMiners.com to buy your miner today. And now, a Liberty Beat special report. A trial in Austin. I was grateful Antonio was there to take pictures of what was happening because I feared for my safety. That testimony was shared Thursday by Norma Pizana during the first day of proceedings in the trial of Antonio Beeler. An Austin, Texas activist accused of refusing to obey a police officer after he stepped in to record and ultimately defend a woman when she was apparently being treated aggressively by police. Pizana is the female passenger who was ripped from her friend's car shortly before Beeler was arrested for resisting arrest and for allegedly spitting in the face of Officer Patrick Oborski. While those charges were ultimately no billed by a Travis County grand jury, they did indict Beeler on a Class C misdemeanor charge of failure to obey the order of an officer. The state is relying on the testimony of Oborski and Officer Robert Snyder, with Oborski testifying that Beeler was fully aggressive and that he considered him a threat. The defense is attempting to demonstrate that the officers never had the proper authority to detain or handcuff Beeler and that it was the officers themselves that were the aggressors that early New Year's morning. To show the officers as the aggressors, the defense called Pizana to the stand. She told the jury that she called out to Beeler to video record the altercation because she was afraid of what the officers would do to her, saying that she had never been treated like that by a male. At the conclusion of the lengthy first day of the trial, Beeler told the Liberty Beat that he's pleased to see the truth coming to light. I'm really glad that people have been able to come out and tell the truth about what's happened after all these years, and I'm just hoping that the jury, that they're eager to make sure that justice is served. Today is day two in the trial, and it's set to begin with the defense's questioning of Officer Oborski, followed by testimony from an expert on police policies and procedures. Beeler will also take the stand. The Liberty Beat will be there in the courtroom. And for the continuing coverage, as well as the full report of Thursday's proceedings, go to thelibertybeat.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at mymagicmud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. On Wednesday, a new lawsuit was filed against the Environmental Protection Agency for the agency's approval of a controversial herbicide from the Dow Chemical Company. The suit was brought forth by the Center for Food Safety and Earth Justice on behalf of a coalition of groups, including the Pesticide Action Network North America. The news comes just one week after approval was granted for the use of 2,4-D on genetically modified corn and soybean. A similar suit was filed on October 16th by the Natural Resources Defense Council. The Houston Police Officers Union has accused Democratic candidate for District Attorney Kim Ogg of illegally releasing the name of a juvenile victim of sexual assault. Union President Bray Hunt claims that Ogg released the name of the victim in a news release asking for leads while she was employed with Crime Stoppers of Houston. 
Ogg stated that no identity was released. She says a victim's name was mistakenly included on a draft script for the television program Predator Check, but was not aired on television. Kim Ogg has made headlines in the DA race by promising to decriminalize cannabis in Harris County. The Electronic Frontier Foundation has released an updated version of the Surveillance Self-Defense Report, a guide to protecting yourself from spying while on the Internet. The report includes information on important security topics, guides to privacy software, and guides for activists and journalists. The report was first released in 2009. For more information, visit ssd.eff.org. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Well, you can. Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. After briefly reviewing several documents outlining his parents' dire financial circumstances today, 23-year-old Wesleyan University graduate Zach Wallace told reporters he had, quote, absolutely no clue how his mother and father are going to dig themselves out of the $35,000 of student loan debt they incurred to pay for his college education. I mean, this is going to be really hard on my parents. When I was in college, I just assumed that, you know, they would pay off my student loans within a few years of me graduating. But I never realized how expensive college is going to be for them. Wallace, who graduated with a film studies degree in 2012 and has since had two unpaid internships, told reporters that from the way prevailing interest rates are trending, his parents could easily be paying off his debt for the next quarter century. They're going to be paying for the rest of their lives. And on top of it all, they have to help me out with my rent, too. I mean, it sucks. It really, really sucks. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free and take control of the airwaves here at 855 450 free. That's 855-450-3733. Join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. It works most of the time, but our last Skype caller was uh, in a, I guess, bad data set or maybe was running a torrent or something like that. It sounded like he was in a car. It sounded like he was using the Skype on the cell phone while driving. Yeah, so I'm guessing maybe he was just in a, a low data area and that was causing the problem. But most of the time it sounds great, so call us on Skype at username lrn.fm. And the us tonight includes me, Ian, Ellen, and Daryl. So we just spent, for those of you just tuning in, we just spent the last two hours of the show uh, where Ellen shared with us a lengthy piece from The Guardian where the author was attempting to convince people to stop reading the news and stop watching and stop listening to the news. He claims that he has stopped for the last four years and that his life is better for it. We I've had- been sober for four years, man. No news at all. Well, the thing is, the piece was so extreme in the fact that he was saying, don't listen to it all. I think he was just trying to make any impact whatsoever on people so that they Maybe. won't place all of their stock into the news. Well, the first part is uh, the first part of beating an addiction is admitting that you have a problem, right? So maybe that's what he was trying to do, Ellen. He was trying to reach the junkies who were uh, reading the website as a junkie might consume uh, any other sort of drug or addiction. So, um, yeah, I thought he made some interesting points, and I do, I do agree that news can be a bad habit. I think that at the same time, there are there's some really good journalism out there, and if you, right. you know, if you cut off your uh, consumption of news completely, then you will be relatively ignorant as to what's going on in the world. If all you are using for knowing what's happening in the world is what you happen to hear from other people, it's probably going to pretty severely limit you. Uh, I mean, for instance, if you look at some of the videos out there uh, of like Mark Dice, for instance, I'm not a huge fan of him, but there's there's some things that he does. The man on the street stuff yeah. he does is funny. 
the stuff where he dissects the Super Bowl halftime show. The Illuminati To stuff. show you the 666 ways the Illuminati was involved in the Super Bowl is ridiculous. Yeah, but it's interesting to show. And Howard Stern does this stuff too, right? So, uh, you know, he'll send I out. I wouldn't know. I don't he does. watch Howard Stern. So he'll send out his, uh, his men or whatever to the streets of New York and have them do man on the street segments and ask people very simple questions. You know, who's the vice president kind of questions and a lot of people don't know man they uh they have no idea and jay leno used to do that it was called the jaywalking yeah. segment it's not hard to put those segments together because most people aren't really paying attention to the news i don't think uh they're paying attention to who's hosting american idol or who's on survivor or i mean, I don't even know if those shows are on the air these days right but. the most popular television shows yeah. i mean that's probably what you turn to first when you get home from work and you just want to relax and be entertained because the news isn't entertaining. It's scary. It's something that's uh, designed to frighten and keep you on the hook. They want you to, you know, tune in through the next commercial break to find out where Ebola is going to strike next and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of what we focused on. And there's other aspects to the news world. Daryl, you wanted to share with us a study from Pew Research regarding yes. people and what choices they make in consuming news. And yes. Are they biased? And it appears, though, uh, that they are. The article Aren't here— they're just studying the obvious here? I mean, well, ru- not, righties not watch really. Fox, lefties watch MSNBC. Do you need a study to figure that out? Well, the study was actually part of a political polarization in America study that they were doing that was a year-long study. Wow, okay. And one aspect of it was looking at the ways that people get their news— And what they found was that when it comes to getting news about politics and government, liberals and conservatives inhabit different worlds. There Mm -hmm. is little overlap in the news sources that they turn to and trust. And whether discussing politics online or with friends, they are more likely than others to interact with like-minded individuals, according to the study. Okay. Uh, The study... Again, it was a year-long political polarization in America study that looks at the way people get information about government and politics in three different settings. The news media, social media, and the way people talk about politics with friends and family. In all three areas, the study finds that those with the most consistent ideological views on the left and right have information streams that are distinct from those of individuals with more mixed political views and very distinct from each other. Okay. Wait, so you're saying that people who only have a limited source have a very limited viewpoint. Mm-hmm. How surprising is that? Not at all. Right. Or, And th- this is one of the things that they don't really look into of were the people very conservative before... 47% of them only watched Fox News, or is it that the people that watch Fox News happen to they be... Became, conser- they became more conservative? No. that well, That's think- what they don't... They don't look at, uh-huh. you know, the chicken-egg sort yeah. of well, thing Well, doesn't here. it make more sense that people would have a certain viewpoint and then... Uh, choose a news source from there because if you if you're out like searching for news sources that you want to watch regularly you're going to watch one that you disagree with and get angry and then change the channel and try to find something that you agree with more that makes you feel better about your position but there there are other studies that i have heard and you know of course i've not actually read the reports but i've heard that People tend to listen to programs that they disagree with longer than people that agree with. So, for instance, uh, the Rush Limbaugh haters will Mm. listen to more of a Rush Limbaugh show than the people that love Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, I guess it would get boring, like, listening to the same viewpoint over and over again. You need something to be angry at. That may be true, Daryl, but when you break down the people who listen to Rush Limbaugh because they hate him— Comparing them to the people who would listen to a a progressive talk show host, for instance. Are there more people who would listen to the progressive talk show host who are liberals than would listen to Rush Limbaugh? I suspect there are due to confirmation bias. Right. So uh, just some of the striking differences between liberals and conservatives, and they have them broken down between consistent liberals, uh, mostly liberal 
mixed, mostly conservative, and consistently conservative. Mm. So they've got you know five different categories. So here. where the libertarians are, we have no idea. Uh, libertarians would probably be considered mixed. Okay. Uh, so consistent liberals wind up trusting on average about four different news sources. Uh, 15% consistently watch CNN, 12% MSNBC, 13% NPR, and 10% the New York Times, whereas people that are consistently conservative are tightly clustered around one main news source. Fox News. Fox News at 47%. <laughs> What's what comes in after that though? Does it list? Uh, it does, but that's much further down. In this eighty-page study, right? Does yeah. it go Fox then CNN then I don't know. MSNBC? I, I, I can skip down and find that later. But they they have this side-by-side uh, -side comparison on a yeah. few key points that I want to hit real quick. Uh, people that are consistent liberals are more likely to defriend someone on a social networking site mm. because of politics. Whereas consistent conservatives are more likely to hear political opinions similar to their own on Facebook. I've noticed that. Liberals, um, if, if you talk to them on Facebook, and I, I don't like generalizing all people, but I'll just say I've had more of this experience with liberals than with anybody else. They are so intolerant of other people's opinions. Like, if you don't agree, they're supposed to be, like, all open-minded and for the people. But Tolerance, it just, man. Yeah, they, they hmm. will not tolerate anybody else's opinion. I, I have had that experience as well. Now, Daryl, maybe I misunderstood what you said there. You said that uh, liberals on social media are more likely to unfriend someone over a disagreement, but conservatives, what? What, run that uh, conservative conservatives phone? are more likely to hear political opinions similar to their own on Facebook, meaning that they're not friending the other people in as the first often. place. Right. I see. Uh, of the 36 news sources that were specifically asked about in this survey, the consistent liberals distrust only eight of them, and the consistent conservatives distrust 24. Because the liberal media conspiracy, 855-450 free. You can take control. We'll get more of yes. this info, and you can share your thoughts as well on Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237.
I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the Tort Attorneys right now. 800-708-7917-800-708-7917-800-708-7917-800-708-7917. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls toll free. You may dial in and bring up anything you want at 855 450 free. Talking about people and their news consumption habits. And you're certainly welcome to share it with us. Uh, are you a news junkie? You can tell your story, or maybe you've beaten the news addiction. Uh, also, right now, what we're talking about is, you know, political viewpoints. Uh, there's a Pew study that Daryl is sharing with us, the executive summary of here, and some interesting details from the study about people and their political views and how that affects how they consume news, what their preferences are. I mean, most of it seems kind of predictable, but there are some interesting observations uh, to be made, and we'll continue with that right. here. Right, and they, they threw out the predictable stuff at the very beginning, right? and then they lure you in to read the rest of the 80-page uh you know, I don't think many people they, will be lured into reading an 80-page study. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, I started reading a story will. a few days ago, and I realized it was 80 pages long, and I just kept reading. What was that? Um, it was just a, a short story that I found. I thought oh, it was going to be fiction. Two- Yes. Okay. Well, I thought it was going to be different. like two or three pages. Turned out to be much, much longer. Fiction <laughs> can, I think, pull you in in a way that a study, an eighty-page study, could possibly would not pull anyone in. I'll probably wind up skimming. 50 pages of it and actually reading 30. So speaking of news, uh, antiwar.com has got it. And I'm sorry to tell you it's not going to be good news uh, for the most part at antiwar.com, but it's important news. It's news that you're not going to get on the front page of pretty much any of the mainstream media websites. These guys are doing original reporting in a lot of cases, and they'll also uh, they'll also pull international headlines that'll never make it to the headlines on Fox or or MSNBC. So go to antiwar.com to find out more about well, why war is so terrible. And they're doing a fundraising drive right now. They really need uh, your help. If you love peace and you're sick and tired of all the wars around the world, then you really can, uh, they can use your assistance. Uh, whatever you can give, they would appreciate. They take Bitcoin, by the way. You can go to antiwar.com and donate there. Or call them today, antiwar.com slash donate. That's antiwar.com slash donate. Antiwar.com, because war is the health of the state. Uh, Daryl, go ahead and uh, let's continue here. Some more uh, observations from the Pew study about people's media consuming habits. So after going over the you know highlights that were very predictable, 
they found out that those that are consistently liberal and those that are consistently conservative actually have some common ground. Both wow. consistent liberals and consistent conservatives are more likely to drive political discussion. That is, others turn to them. So instead of being, you know, a listener, they are, you know, someone who tends to speak about politics more overall. And as part of the study found out that those on the left and the right ends of the spectrum who together comprise about 20% of the overall public have a greater impact on the political process than do those with mixed ideological views. They are well, the most likely sense. to vote, donate to political campaigns, and participate directly in politics. That's not really much of a surprise because the people who have firm viewpoints on one extreme or another are going to be the ones who are the most motivated to try to see their beliefs come into existence. Right. They'll go on crusades to see their, their viewpoints come to fruition. The five ideological groups in this analysis – Consistent liberal, mostly liberal, mixed, mostly conservative, and consistent conservative are based on responses to 10 questions about a range of political values, mm. and I will read those in just a second. Okay. That those who express consistently conservative or consistently liberal opinions have different ways of informing themselves about politics and government is not surprising. But the depth of these divisions, the difference between those who have strong ideological views and those who do not, are striking. Hmm. And that's where they get into some of the other stuff. Uh, I want to be struck. Strike strike me, Daryl, with information. Do, do you Dazzle want to us with hear your the uh, 10 questions? Should, should we do the 10 questions first? Ooh, I, I don't know. What's the most dazzling? The most dazzling we what, of the We want to see the sparkle. The striking, the striking, the, the striking, striking okay. information. Uh, she wants so to be some dazzled. of this I've already touched on uh, that the strict conservative or the consistent conservatives trust Fox News. At forty-seven percent of them say that Fox News is their main source for news about government and politics. Is, is that that's not striking, really? I mean, that, that, that's not striking. But uh, Ellen had asked the question about well, what came in second? Ah, uh, yes, local radio. Mm. At 11%, okay. local television at 5 local newspaper at 3 and Google News at 3%. Wait a minute. Okay, so of – wow, okay. Now that's striking to me because I thought that uh, – I didn't think internet would have been factored in here. You know, it's pretty I, great that people are actually relying on local news sources more than national ones. Well, Fox News is not. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, just like the last few that he listed were like local radio station, local newspaper. Yeah, but they were beneath Fox News. Right, but I'm just saying, like, if if that's even close, it's like to the second, second thing yeah. after Fox News, the second was thing radio. was local, local, local for conservatives. Right. But for the liberals, it was like CNN, CNN, MSNBC, NPR, MSNBC, New York Times, and then local television. But the number of people that trust CNN, that CNN as their go to mm -hmm. is only 15 percent. Right. And, but and that was, still comes in number one among consistent liberals. When I was shocked. OK, when you read that Google News was yes. the you know sort of the bottom of the pack in the conservative number 5 in the conservative out listing out of 38 news sources that they asked about okay i'm sorry not bottom of the pack but bottom of the 5 it was yes. what what percentage by google news 3%, 3%. it's not a whole lot uh, so the fact that uh, that google news appeared in there was a shock to me because i didn't hear it in the the left uh, the liberal side right. now i'm sure it's in there you know somewhere in the 30 something sources or whatever but uh, that was shocking to me because I figured they just let the internet out of this. I thought they were only asking about old media because when you were reading those numbers back, it's like old media, old media, old media, old media. I mean, you would thought you would have thought that uh, are these people over the age of sixty five? I mean, who are they interviewing here? Why why aren't internet? Okay, so let me let me set reset here for just a moment. I get these industry updates, uh, you know, for we, we're doing radio, we right. have talk radio, sort of industry news that comes in, and I subscribe to a, a newsletter by one of the consultants in the talk radio business, Holland Cook. Uh, he does, uh, if you listen to LRN.FM or the Free Talk Live live streams, you'll hear some of his little 
uh, survival speech clips. The same guy. He's a radio consultant by trade. And he's constantly putting numbers into his uh, newsletter to kind of let people in the business know what people's consuming habits are. And Internet's heavy, heavy, heavy. It's a major competitor for, at least according to some of these other studies, Internet's a huge competitor amongst average Americans, which are not lefties and righties, right? Average Americans. Internet is, I don't think it's quite beaten television. I, I'll have to go and look at some more of the recent newsletters, but it's getting close Internet is going to overtake television as far as people and how they, soon. Get, how they get their news. So they, they actually break down the 38 news sources, and the one that is the most trusted will shock you. Okay, all right. We'll get most trusted overall? Overall. All right, we'll come back with more here in moments. You can take control. This is Free Talk Live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters? Buyers and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone 213 493 0308. It's a long distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213 493 0308. That's 213 493 0308. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of. Where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because... I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. 
Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what you want by dialing toll-free at 855-450-FREE. And if you care about your online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. They are the ones who bring you those toll-free telephone numbers. ProXPN is a global virtual private network, and they encrypt your data, meaning that your internet service provider, they're probably snooping on you right now. But if you're using ProXPN, they will no longer be able to know what you're doing at your ISP. Because, well, it'll be encrypted. Whatever you're doing will be encrypted. And then essentially your ISP is just passing along encrypted data. You can download the app for ProXPN at, uh, at ProXPN.com slash FTL. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android plus Linux users. Setup's a little different for you, but it's actually pretty easy to get working with Linux. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50 when you want to upgrade to their premium account to get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites uh, so pro xpn is a really handy tool and as i said you can go and try it out for free right now at proxpn.com slash ftl but when you're ready to upgrade use code ftl50 to get 50 percent off the price of the annual account which is good by the way that discount good for the lifetime of your account it breaks the price down to around five bucks a month and if you want to save even more, pay with Bitcoin and use code FTLBTC, and you'll get 62% off of the annual account that way. So great deals on privacy that is priceless at proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. So again, those codes are FTL50 and FTLBTC at proxpn.com slash FTL. Daryl and Ellen, Ian in the studio here. Daryl, you're sharing with us a Pew Research su a study regarding Americans, their political beliefs. The polarization of politics in America. There are Americans having certain political beliefs, and what do they consume? How do they consume their news media? It's sort of been a large conversation we've been having about the news tonight, which was just coincidental, by the way. Ellen brought in her story, and you brought in this. It fit together so well. It did. It's fun how that works out sometimes. Laws of attraction. So, uh, so Daryl, there was something shocking that you said was coming up. What was it? Yes. So they have 38 different news sources that they asked people about. And they gave them three options, more trusted than distrusted, about equally trusted as distrusted, or more distrusted than trusted. Okay. Make sense? Yes. And there's actually only one of the news sources that is consistently by all five groups, consistently liberal, mostly liberal, mixed, mostly conservative, and consistently conservative. Mm -hmm. There's only one outlet that is more trusted than distrusted by all five groups as far as a plurality, but that's not the most trusted news source overall. The most trusted source overall is The Economist. That's what? interesting. Followed hmm. closely by BBC, NPR, PBS, and then the Wall Street Journal, and the Wall Street Journal is the one that is consistently ranked as more trusted than distrusted. That's interesting. So it's things that are uh, international or national, have many different sources and writers and, and people that they reference, and um, I'm guessing they're fact-checked a lot. So Isn't the are they less biased or just more dry in their content? Probably more dry. The Economist sounds pretty boring to me. But have you ever actually read The Economist? No, I have not. It's a very good publication. Is it? it is a very good publication. But one thing that The Economist doesn't have going for it is that not a lot of the people surveyed have heard of it, mm -hmm. or at least less than 40% of those surveyed have heard of hmm. The Economist. Others on the list that just sort of jump out at me, The Blaze... Is more distrusted than trusted by consistently liberal and mostly liberals. 
The New York Times, the Washington surprise. Post, and MSNBC, not surprisingly, more trusted, or rather more distrusted than trusted by conservatives, and the blaze also heard of by less than 40%. They're relatively new on the scene. Uh, down at the bottom of the list, and this is very interesting, ones that consistently rank as more distrusted than trusted the by both by all five groups you mean uh well there's only one that all five groups rank as more distrusted okay but this is just the average the weighted average of all five groups Mm -hmm. comes out more distrusted than trusted the one that everybody distrusts the most is buzzfeed Hmm. all right uh the others daily coasts Sean Hannity, <laughs> Al Jazeera America, the Ed so Schultz show. When I hear these titles, it sounds kind of like something that, like, somebody was just scanning Twitter and just, like, gathered all this information and made articles about it. Wait a minute. Okay, just to be clear, when you're saying they're more distrusted, you don't mean across all five categories. Right, but the average. Because On everybody average. was asked... I see. Is this more trusted than distrusted? About the same so or more that, distrusted? So they average the five groups out. Meaning that on a, a lefty show like the Ed Schultz show or uh, what were the last couple that you gave me? Uh, Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh. These are mo- mostly distrusted on average is what you're yes. saying. That means that the you know whoever it was that was distrusting was so heavy compared to those who trust them right. that it, they'd outweighed it So the, yes. on the average. I see. That's interesting. Yeah, and then some of these... A well, couple of the a couple of the groups have it about equal. That's good because because uh, you know talk show hosts aren't news people, right? So it's right. good that people aren't trusting talk show hosts, right? Because they're mostly t- out there to get a response. That's correct. Yeah, yeah and they, it's their job to have an opinion, not to read the news. I mean, they share news in the purpose of talking about it and having an opinion about it. So that you would be inter- entertained, presumably, and continue to listen to the show and hold through some commercial breaks. And about the middle of the pack, uh, right where Fox News is, Fox News is at the very bottom of the more trusted than distrusted. Hmm. Just above Fox is Yahoo News, and just below Fox is Mother Jones. Huh. Cool, man. All right, so let's get to the questions. The, so the, the questions. questions. How did this was how they determined whether or not somebody was a conservative or liberal? They did not just ask them, "Are you conservative or liberal?" Right. They asked them ten questions. They asked them ten questions, and for a liberal response, you get a negative one. For a conservative response, you get a plus one. And for an other, I don't know, I refuse to answer, or another volunteered response, you get a zero. Okay. So question 25A, government is almost always wasteful and inefficient, or government often does a better job than people give it credit for? Hmm. The first one was the conservative response, the second being the liberal, and that's okay. how that's, this will go. Yeah, that's not too tough to figure out. That, 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 that's how this is going to go. Yep. The, the first response is conservative. So you know, keep score at home uh, or wherever you happen to be. Uh, question 25B, government regulation of business usually does more harm than good, or government regulation of business is necessary to protect the public interest? Question 25C, poor people today have it easy because they can get government benefits without doing anything in return, or poor people have hard lives because government benefits don't go far enough to help them live decently? <laughs> Question 25D. The government today can't afford to do much more to help the needy, or the government should do more to help needy Americans, even if it means going deeper into debt. Hmm. Uh, Question 25F. Black people who can't get ahead in this country are mostly responsible for their own condition, or racial discrimination is the main reason why many black people can't get ahead these days. All right. Question 25G. Oh, hold, hold on. We're, ha- we're halfway through. Yes. All right. All right. So my score so far is one. Okay. Question- Meaning that I've uh, answered uh, pl- plus one twice, zero twice, and then negative one, the liberal side, once. So that would be a total of one. We'll get to the other five yes. here in a moment. So have you guys been keeping track as well? Um, Probably not as I well as you. I kept track and had a plus one. 
At the end of all 10. At the end. Okay. All right. We'll come back uh, with more your calls and thoughts here. Welcome in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live. The toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN is 855-450-FREE. The event you've been waiting for is here. Lumber Liquidator's third annual fall flooring yard sale. It's your chance to get first quality, full warranty direct from the mill flooring at unbelievable closeout prices. Like oak laminate for an incredible 19 cents a square foot and pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for just $149. Plus beautiful bamboo for 63% less than other stores. Take advantage of our 20 years of savings with 20-month special financing and get even more unheard of flooring deals in our stores. Fall flooring yard sale is Thursday through Monday only. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Do you trade? coffee was the last cup of coffee you had really good free talk live has teamed up with buzzbox to bring you the best of the best coffee shade grown organic top one percent grade arabica but what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com we can give another micro loan through kiva get a free pound to try it out a free pound of the best of the best coffee help others one cup at a time coffee.freetalklive.com Hi folks, Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem, whether you're for or against Obamacare. It's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Or you can log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. Getthetea.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Aren't you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Well, stop using their money. There's an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. And by using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. Moments remain. Enough time for you. If you're on hold right now, we'll get you in here. 855-450-FREE is the number. If you're not on hold at the moment, 855-450-3733. Uh, with you tonight, it's Ian here. Alan. And Daryl. We're going to continue with this quiz, uh, sort of a, in the middle of a larger piece about a Pew study, looking at Americans, their political beliefs, and their news media consumption habits. The, uh, the Pew folks asked a series of 10 questions 
uh, to which you would score yourself a plus. Well, they would score you. you they'd probably right. tell you how they were scoring people, but they would score you a plus one for a conservative answer, a negative one for a liberal answer, and a zero for a not in the middle. An sort of, other, I don't yeah. know, I refuse to answer, or a volunteered response. Right. So we've gone through the first five of the questions, and Daryl, uh, for those scoring at home, we'll continue and do the remaining five now, and then we'll go to your calls. Question 25G. Immigrants today are a burden on our country because they take our jobs, housing, and health care. Or immigrants today strengthen our economy because of their hard work and talents. Okay. Question 25I. The best way to ensure peace is through military strength. Good diplomacy is the best way to ensure peace. Okay. Question 25N, as in Nancy. Most corporations make a fair and reasonable amount of profit, or business corporations make too much profit. <laughs> okay. Question 50 R. Stricter environmental laws and regulations cost too many jobs and hurt the economy, or stricter environmental laws and regulations are worth the cost. All right. I have scored a negative one and all was Hold said on. and done. Oh, that was Question 10? 50 U. <laughs> Never mind. Homosexuality should be discouraged by society, or homosexuality should be accepted by society. All right, all right. I'm a negative two at this point. Well, if so, if a I've negative been scoring... two would put you in the mixed category, okay. which is from plus two to negative two. Mixed liberal, you mean? Or no? No, just no, mixed in mixed. general. There's okay. Uh, consistently liberal. Gotcha. Mostly liberal. Mixed. Okay. Mostly conservative or consistently conservative. Ellen, did you keep a score? Yes, and if I've been scoring correctly, then I'm at positive one. Okay, so me and Ellen both have a positive one, mm -hmm. which also puts us firmly in the mixed category. <laughs> firmly. We're firmly mixed. <laughs> We're firmly mixed. Right, we can't so. make our minds up one way or another. Firmly. Let's go to El Rushbo. He's on the line in Tampa Bay. You're on Free Talk Live. Actually, I think you're hard right progressives in a very libertine sense. I don't a know hard that right I don't progressive? That yes, you're almost entirely indistinguishable from the likes of Tom Hartman, except for your anti worship of the state. But That's ridiculous. I've it. actually had an argument no, with Tom not. Hartman. I can back it up. Uh, so but it's easy for you to say when you don't even know all of our viewpoints. You're making really quite an assumption. Own? Yeah. Uh, you're, May I speak, Ellen? You've been on the show for the entire three hours. And if you don't like my assessment of you, that's fine. You can take it for what it's worth. But I've been listening to your show for six months now. And uh, your anti-war and anti-Israel uh, um, sentiments on the station are exactly like Tom Hartman's. And all your uh, libertine values are exactly like Tom Hartman's. Again, I said you don't worship the state like Tom Hartman does. Uh, but I should like to say about Rush Limbaugh, that he is an arrogant wasassifrast in the same sense that Ian Bernard Freeman and Daryl W. Perry are. So I drop this uh, bashing of him because you guys are intolerant, close-minded, as Rush Limbaugh has ever been. That's why you don't ever want to What take are we me intolerant Darryl. about and close-minded about? Pick one. Oh, Daryl, Daryl, ever since I've been calling in to Free Talk Live, on a Friday with you, Ian, hung up on me and says he doesn't ever want to talk to me. And if he's in the first chair, he'll never let me get on. And that's why he's not engaging me right now. And he never does because he's, his ego is as bloated as his gut. Well, I don't know if because he's tired of, uh, you know, talking to you, that means he's intolerant or closed minded. Has. Well, that he was very rude. I don't know. It's, have you never I talked? I don't like Daryl. And I don't like your friend Ian either, Ellen, but I want to ask you a question if I may, because I'm really nervous. Can I? Sure. Why not? I'm going, out on a, I'm going on a date tonight for the first time in 30 years, uh, since 1987, that is, with a 17-year-old, and I'm really nervous. Can you give me some advice? She has pink, pink uh, highlights in her hair, and we're going to go to a Friday night football game. All right. But Thanks I'm for go the to call, the Rush Bow. <laughs> All righty, then. Well, the only advice I can give is to be much more respectful to her than you were to any of us. Yeah, good advice. Thank you for that, Ellen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as far as, like, being intolerant, just because there's someone who is a really rude individual who wants your attention, uh, which is what we're talking about with uh, that guy who just called a moment ago. He normally calls himself James in Arizona. 
Um, he uh, doesn't mean you have to tolerate someone like that who is just vitriolic and nasty towards you. I do it because this is talk radio. It's an open phone show. I don't care how nasty people are. It doesn't bother me at all. If um, he were interested in a discussion and having a conversation, then I would engage him. But mm-hmm. he just wants to monologue at us. Yeah. And I don't have any, you know, I any would... interest at all in engaging somebody that just wants to monologue at me. Right. He should actually give reasons for what he believes instead of just stating it, because then he would be a little more tolerable. To all of us, I think. Yeah, well, you have to be right to be tall. To to if you want people to tolerate you, try to be more tolerable. Try to be a better person who uh, has communication skills. And I hope that he doesn't do what he's been doing with us with his date tonight, and that is, you know, just puking all over her with words, and uh, you know, just keeping on talking because that's a terrible way to go on a date. And of course, I don't believe him in what he was saying there. He was taking a shot at me because I have a teenage girlfriend, and shame on me, I guess. But, uh, you know, that's what he was doing there. But even if he were actually going on a date tonight, then, uh, you know, when you're going on a date with somebody, it's good to ask them about themselves. It's good right. to, you know, talk to them about them and what's important in their lives and uh, not just spew out your opinions on them. Right. And don't assume that you know everything Let's about continue. a person. With Jose, listening in Tallahassee. You're on Free Talk Live, Jose. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Well, I was, I was, I heard you guys talk about, you know, on the survey, and you seemed a little surprised that on the conservative side, local radio came in second. But I think you have to think of it as local radio. The radio station may be local, but a lot of their programming is going to be national. The Rush Limbaugh. That's true. The Sean Hannity. You know, so... In that wasn't sense, a surprise to me. Either. I just like to clarify. I, I wasn't surprised oh, no, that, no, no. Okay. that Sorry, radio came in after it. Fox News on the conservative side as far as what they listened to because lots of talk radio is conservative. I, I was more surprised in, in, that local television and newspaper came yeah, in in the top a little, five. Is a, little, is a little shocking. I think that the reverse is also true, though, since there isn't big national liberal talk show, you know, not nearly as big as conservative talk show. Right then it kind of makes sense that they would be all over the place. Right. You know, whatever. The New York Times, MSNBC, I don't remember the choices, but... NPR so, uh, was in there, by the uh, way. And CNN, NPR, MSNBC, and New York so, Times so, were the top four. So NPR was number two on the list NPR of NPR is number two. So that's basically the same then. So CNN, so, the top yeah. dog, NPR was their local radio. I mean, they say NPR, right, but, but a lot of NPR has local content too. Right, local but uh, well, yeah. CNN only had 15%, and NPR was two percentage points behind. So just as a matter of your brain, what are your thoughts on NPR? Oh, we were actually just talking about this. Um, Occasionally, when I listen to radio, I'll listen to NPR, and it's really enjoyable to hear all the interviews that they're doing. They go in-depth into one specific story, and it's uh, it's very story-like. And I I don't know. I just enjoy that. It's kind of like an artistic way of interviewing. What do you think, Jose? I enjoy it. Well, because I enjoy listening to it as well, but um, I have a big problem with subsidizing it through government. Mm. And I work in radio, so I have a really big problem with me paying for some of my competitor, basically. Are you uh, working uh, at WVFT there? No, no, no. I I, I work for a cumulus station. I'm I'm the traffic. Manager. Oh, okay, listening um, to the competition. I uh, <laughs> I see. Yeah, well, I get I get I get in trouble a lot because like when something goes wrong, they're like, "You didn't hear it." And I'm like, "Not. Nah, I don't listen to our station. So I'm sorry." <laughs> well, you're not the program director. It's not your responsibility. <laughs> exactly. It's not my job. Hey, Jose, thanks for the call tonight, man. I do appreciate hearing from you, uh, listening to the competition there in Tallahassee, WVFT 93.3, which I'm glad that we're on there uh, on weeknights now. It's really great to be on. Let's go to Elma, also listening to that very same station in Tallahassee. Hey, Elma. Hey, sweetie. Is it Elma or Alma? How do you spell your name? Alma. A L. In the South, it's Alma. But Alma. How do you spell it? Say Alma. Y'all got me saying Alma. Well, wait. How do you <laughs> how do you spell it? A L M A. And you pronounce it Alma, like Alma. Alabama. Gotcha. Yeah, Al and Ma. Very good. All right. So what you got? Go ahead, quick. You got like twenty seconds. Oh, Go. Oh my God. All right. You know when they first started putting icicles on the news, I said, you know they bl- blotted out the faces, whited them out. Why did they do that? No one's ever Icicles? talked about this. 
Are you talking about I, ISIS? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> call tomorrow, uh, Alma, or Alma. Alma. Call tomorrow. We can talk about it then and call earlier. Please don't call it right at the end of the show. See ya. <laughs> if you're a parent, chances are you know all about the spooky truth books with subjects ranging from shadowy fraternal organizations to mind-controlling TV shows. Kids can't get enough of this series of short, scary children's novels. And spooky truth author K.L. Graves is joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Now, my kids just love these books. In just four years, you put out 25 books. <laughs> it came from Tower 7, Curse of the Chemtrails, The Zionist Who Cried Holocaust. Now, this stuff has really been catching on. Over 40 million copies sold so many bestsellers out there. Yeah, I've been thrilled. Before this series, I was self-publishing pamphlets and handing them out on the train. Now I get emails from teachers and parents all the time telling me that my books are all their kids can talk about. Oh, well, it's true. My son used to hate to read. Now he's holed up in the basement with these spooky truth books all day and night. Says he never watches TV, doesn't even want tap water anymore. He just loves reading so much. This is the Onion News Network. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.26 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,233 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $360. Antiwar.com reports, speaking at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Undersecretary of the Treasury David Cohen has threatened to impose sanctions on anyone buying oil from the Islamic State. In taking large portions of Syria's oil-producing east and several oil fields in Iraq, the Islamic State has carved out a de facto state with a lot of oil wealth, and in addition to refining it for domestic use, they've reportedly been bankrolling their ongoing expansion by selling it at substantially below market value to middlemen. These middlemen, mostly Turkish and Kurdish buyers who smuggle the oil into their own territory,